people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Join with the family in heaven. Make sure you are praying in tongues. But ye beloved, building yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You've not been filled with the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come upon you. We are the victorious ones. Go ahead and pray in tongues. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue and defieth himself, builds up himself, builds capacity in the spirit. Come on, make sure you're praying outside. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Jesus. More of you. For it's in your light that we see light. Thou will show us the path of life. For in your life, we see life. Hallelujah. 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 It's important that our reception of God's word and God's spirit be conscious. Are you listening to me? You have to plan for it. You have to prepare. Prepare your spirit. Say, Lord, I didn't just come to hear stories. I came to receive more. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and when there was no more empty vessel, the oil stopped flowing. And so perpetually, you must be in that position that says, Lord, I thank you for the things you have done yesterday. I thank you for the anointing and the grace. Thank you for healing the sick. Thank you for what you are doing in my life. But in your presence, I pray, breathe upon me once again. That the wind of your spirit will quicken me. Make me come alive. Quicken my understanding to be able to comprehend the deep things. Cause me to see light in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, many things happen in the glory of God. Aside from signs, wonders, and miracles. One of the, the things that happen in the glory of God is that you are lifted. Hallelujah. You are translated into a higher realm of spiritual perception. 
so that you are able to comprehend. He said, who has known the mind of Christ that he may instruct him? He said, but we have. It has been given to us. We have access to the mind of Christ. We have access. Illuminated by the light of his spirit. So that you can see as he sees. You can interpret things as he interprets. And then you will walk in his victory. So be conscious of his presence and his glory. Wherever you are, inside or outside. It's always the union of the spirit and the word. He said the spirit and the bride say come. It is the spirit and the bride that can tell the word to come. So you are in partnership with the Holy Spirit asking the word to come. Say the spirit alongside the bride will command the word to come. And every time the word comes, there is a performance. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. So we bow as we enter the throne room. And we cast ourselves down. At your feet, you are holy, thou art worthy, there is none like you, for in your presence, that is where we must be, Lord we bow, as we enter, throne room we cast ourselves down at your feet come on Shabbat the Lord he alone is worthy you are holy thou art holy there is none like you for in your presence there is where For in your presence, Lord, in your presence, there is where we It's in your presence, that's truly where I must be. It's in your presence, that is where I must be. The presence of God makes a rod to board. The presence of God stops bread from decay. That is where I must be. For he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, Thou art my strong, my strength, my fortress, my rock. For there is safety in your presence. There are miracles in your presence. There's deliverance in your presence. I'm changed in your presence. I become wiser in your presence. I am strengthened in your presence. In your presence, that is where I must be. This is part of Koinonia, it's a culture of worship. In your presence, that is where I must be. In your presence, that is where. I must be beautiful you are one
wonderful you be. You are glorious, faithful in all your ways, my help and my reward. You are glorious, my God, beautiful you are, wonderful you be. You are glorious. the voices my God beautiful you are wonderful you've been you are glorious you're faithful in all your ways faithful in all your ways my help and my reward you are glorious beautiful you Father, fall like rain, Spirit of the living God, upon your people, fall like rain, receive it, in fire and his power, outside, fall upon your people, the power of God is touching people, Receive it is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Receive it is the fire of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands, everyone, for it falls like the dew of heaven. Rain upon your people, O oh God. Rain upon your people. Fall like fire. Quicken your people to a higher realm of power, a higher realm of insight. A higher realm of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Let it cause your eyes to see, your ears to hear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you are exposed to the presence and the glory of His Majesty. Then you are changed. It's an atmosphere. It's not just a person. It's an atmosphere. This is why you can be touched from anywhere. It's an atmosphere. It's a circumference of glory. That anyone that dares to plunge into it. Will experience a tangible change. A quickening in your mind. Not every revelation can be taught. 
Some are byproducts of his glory. It's a quickening of the spirit. That's why we are exposed. It's not just about falling down. It's an atmosphere and the create the effect it creates in your spirit. Drink of that atmosphere. It will change you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. the influence of demons not in this place we believe in the works of Christ and this is a place for emancipation three people hallelujah he will be free for death cannot dwell in his presence he is light therefore in the name that is above all names three of you please ushers I need them here you will know three of you in the name of the Lord Jesus, at the count of three, that devil, that demon cannot stand. No, not in God's presence. Hallelujah. For he gave us authority over unclean spirits to emancipate his people. In the name above all names, at the count of three, one, two, three. There's one of them outside. That's one of them on the floor. Bring them. That devil is a liar. There's one outside. Two are inside. One is outside. One is in this room. That devil, I command him to set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Touches the one person outside under the influence of all kinds of manifestations of darkness. Holy are you, of darkness let this guy go now come out of him in the name of Jesus every foul devil I set you free right now from every yoke of bondage there's one person outside please those outside lift your hands lift your hands those outside by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the light of God shine upon every darkness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the power of the Holy Ghost bring out that one person under the captivity of darkness. Be free now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it is fire upon you. No devil can stand it. You came here captive in the name of the Lord Jesus. Be free.
Alléluia. Jeremiah. Who is Jeremiah? It's not a verse of scripture, it's someone's name. Jeremiah. Who is Jeremiah? You are Jeremiah. This is not the Jeremiah I'm seeing. There is another Jeremiah. He's taller than you. Jeremiah. If you are Jeremiah, you can come out here. The Lord has a word for Jeremiah. He's a guy. It could be your son name. I don't know. But you're taller than this gentleman here. The Lord shows me a word for Jeremiah. Hallelujah. Well, since you came out, let me at least pray for you. If you don't come out here and receive nothing, bless him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah. Please, when you find that person is important, we need to pray for his family. Be seated. God bless you. Hug someone. Tell them I love you. Say it. Hug someone. Don't sit down. Hallelujah. It's good to see everyone again. Let's get to the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister, look at me. Look at me. No, leave I alone. The Lord says I should impart upon you the grace to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus, fire on you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Tonight, I welcome every one of you. This is Koinonia. We've been, we began towards the end of last year considering a series on the full gospel. Hallelujah. Someone's auntie just gave birth. I'm hearing the cry of a child in a labor room and the Lord says it's somebody's auntie that just gave birth, just to announce. Don't just rejoice for nothing. If it's not your auntie, we're not lying here. Don't clap. If your auntie is not pregnant, the child will not jump out of the air. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we began a series on the full gospel. And then we had to pause and now we'll continue. Hallelujah. The full gospel is a teaching that attempts to harmonize the several revelations of the spirit that had been revealed to the church, especially the church in Nigeria. Hallelujah. And we began to examine the fact that the goal of the full gospel is to bring us into maturity. Hallelujah. That God in his character reveals himself in facets and dimensions hallelujah and that as a result of pressing into god several people through dispensations have been able to press into some dimensions of god and have come up with certain revelations some of them have received exaggerations and imbalances hallelujah and the goal is to be able to bring the church into harmony and so we began to um, outline the fact that we'll examine the seven major doctrines that characterize the Nigerian church. Hallelujah. And we listed them. Number one, the gospel of grace. Number two, the gospel of faith or what we know as the word of faith. Hallelujah. Number three. What's number three? Hallelujah. You've forgotten. The gospel of holiness. 
Hallelujah. Number four. Demonology. Satan, demonology, and deliverance. Hallelujah. Number five. The gospel of prosperity. And we're in the sixth one. Tonight we'll be considering the gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. You don't want to miss this teaching. This is a solid teaching tonight. The gospel of power and the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. In a street in the United States of America called Azusa, there was a great man of God who had a lecture and used to teach students called Charles Farnham. Hallelujah. Was a great man, fiery man of the spirit. This was during the revivals of the generals. Now they had seen the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. They had seen miracles because people like Alexander Doe, um, people like, um, uh, you know, um, what's his name? Sorry? Yes, Maria Woodward Eater. And several people had carried the fire and the power of the Spirit. They had seen miracles. People like Amphi McPherson. The woman who would do stretcher only meetings. So they had seen the revivals of the spirit. But then this gentleman would be teaching. And then racism was very strong in the western world. Hallelujah. And there was a black one-eyed man. One of his eyes wasn't so good. To worsen the case. He was black and then he was one-eyed. And so he wouldn't be allowed to join the school of ministry. Hallelujah. And that gentleman would stand outside the class and just be listening. And Charles began to teach them about the mysteries of the kingdom. Began to expound scriptures, just like Koinonia. And the guy would stand outside, the only man in the overflow. And he would listen. Hallelujah. Little would we know that that man would be the pioneer of what we know in proper to be the charismatic move of the spirit. What we call the Azusa Street Revival. Hallelujah. He took the fire, the manifestation. It was said historically that the same way the flames of fire fell upon the apostles in Acts chapter 2, that was the exact same way the flames of fire fell. They saw it. The cloven tongues. It fell upon them on that street called Azusa and it sparked a revival of the charismatic move of the spirit. That men in mass, he that told, it used to be single individuals, all right? And then people come to receive. But now it, there was a widespread manifestation of men demonstrating the character of the spirit. Solid power. They did impossible things in mass. And that fire began to translate from one city to one city one country to one country one continent to another hallelujah then somehow it fell in africa also and our fathers caught that fire hallelujah great men who walked in power not many of them are known alongside with men like apostle babalola we only know him because he's a founder of a ministry but there were many more hallelujah men and women who caught this fire suddenly men began to press into certain dimensions of god and they saw that the holy ghost can take hold of a man such that he begins to exhibit his character in that man hallelujah they saw ordinary men doing the deeds of god men who you couldn't stand close to them hallelujah meet us away from them you were under the anointing and they were exhibiting the character of another being. Just like a demon would possess a man. And the man would assume the character of that demon. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit began to give them insight. And that sparked a dimension of power in the church. Like we have never seen. And through the years... Especially in Nigeria, we had great men and women. Now listen, don't confuse 
just the working of miracles or just provoking things through faith with the charismatic move. The charismatic move was a demonstration of the spirit. It wasn't just healing alone. Are you listening to me? It was a demonstration of the character of the spirit. Men who did things, it wasn't just healing the sick on the street. Their presence, devils cried at their presence. They did all kinds of, they performed more miracles unconsciously than they did consciously. Hallelujah. They would get up from a seat, you come and sit back there and devils will leave. It was an awesome display of the spirit. It opened up a new and a strange dimension of the prophetic. Hallelujah. And today we have great ministries who still carry that banner. Ministries like Christ Embassy. A typical replica of the charismatic move of the spirit. Hallelujah. The demonstration of the power of the spirit. In a charismatic move, it's not an individual that just... Are you following me now? Other moves, an individual carried the fire, then others came to receive. But in the, a, charisma, a typical charismatic move has the least person able to dispense the things of the spirit. There are ministries that you see one Jew, alright? One Jew, if he's not around, nothing happens. But there are ministries that even if you call five people and say just go out, they will be able to reproduce the demonstration of the spirit. That's a charismatic move. Hallelujah. The word charismatic comes from the Greek word charis, grace. A demonstration of the grace of God upon a man. Hallelujah. Praise God. And a lot has happened to this move over the years. And tonight we'll be examining it. Hallelujah. When you put on your television, many things happen to you. You smile, you get angry. Hallelujah. Because there are different kinds of what we know today to be the charismatic move. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 2. Where's the foundation of this gospel of power? Please follow this teaching tonight. It's powerful. Thank you, Jesus. First Corinthians 2. It was that move of the spirit that brought us into the consciousness of what we know as the presence of God. People didn't know so much about the presence of God and the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Now you hear people say, I sat down. Just like it's happening to some of you. And it's like electricity all over my body. Some of you are shaking, vibrating. This is a manifestation. It was that move that began to bring us into this consciousness. Hallelujah. Many people didn't even know what it stood for. Many of you get to pray and there are, there's all kinds of things happening to you. Warm sensation, cold sensation, fire on your eyes, your feet, your knees. You know, all of these moves of the spirit. 1 Corinthians 2. You don't want to imagine how I love teaching about things like this. Praise God. And I, brethren, this is Paul speaking. When I came to you, I came not with the excellency of speech. I wish the church in Nigeria can read this verse again and again. Or of wisdom. This wisdom is Sophia, human wisdom. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Two, for I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in so much trembling. Verse 4, 1, to read. And my speech and my preaching were not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power. Why? Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. Hallelujah. And so this became the foundation of what we know as the gospel of power. Hallelujah. Certain people were tired of a dead religion. Of people coming in, the sick would come in and go back. Demons would come in, escort people to meetings. 
and they will sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs for hours. And these demons would go back. People came oppressed and went back oppressed. And the Holy Ghost began to move in certain people and said, there is a dimension of me that must be opened up to the body, the spirit of power. That the power of the Holy Ghost can be accessible for a believer to wrought victories in righteousness. Hallelujah. Another scripture. 1 Corinthians 14. 4. Sorry, 1 Corinthians 4. There are great ministries that have this as their slogan. Ministries like Spirit Embassy, Hubert Angel. 1 Corinthians 4.20. Are you there? One to read. For the kingdom of God is not in word. One more time. What do you understand by that statement? Hallelujah. What do you understand by that statement? If I say Jimmy is a man, not a woman. Is that clear enough? He said for the kingdom of God. In other words, the reality of the kingdom of God is expressed in the midst of men, not just by words. Words are not sufficient to be able to articulate the reality of the kingdom. It is in the demonstration of power. When the power of the Holy Spirit is made visible, comes into the scene, then people are able to see the reality of the manifestation of the glory of God. Are you following me now? And Paul said, when I came to you, you know why Paul said that? Because Paul was an intellectual. He was not just a dummy. I hope you understand. But he said, when I came, I didn't just come with oratory, the ability to combine words and speak nicely. For that alone is insufficient to bring you into the reality of the kingdom experience. He said, when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech, but I demonstrated something among you that proved the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So the gospel of the kingdom or the gospel of, of, of power seeks to tell the church that there is more to the manifestation of the kingdom of God than just speaking. Are you listening to me? Just a nice, well-prepared sermon. And that true transformation that the body of Christ will not come into the full realization of the kingdom experience, both as um, an evangelical experience and as a charismatic Pentecostal experience just with talking. In other words, you can't keep talking to people about divine health. Are you listening to me? You can't keep talking to people about healing. You can't keep talking to people about certain things. The gospel of power tells you that there must be a demonstration. That the kingdom of God is the expression of that kingdom in Number one, words. But number two, it is validated with power. I said the kingdom of God. In other words, the manifestation of the influence of the Father is not just the issue of talk. Are you listening to me? Miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs. These are the visible manifestations of the glory of God. Please let me tell you something. The manifestation of the glory of God is not a cloud. It's not some mist. Listen, the beauty of all those things is that you leave that place with an experience. Are you listening to me? Say kingdom experience. Kingdom experience is not just in words. If I ask you now, what was the first message? That was preached when you came for koinonia. You cannot even remember. But if I ask you, tell me one remarkable experience. You say, ah, I remember I brought one brother that was just shouting, I won't keep quiet. Five minutes later, that guy was praying in tongues. That's an experience. Are you listening to me? People can forget talk and words. But an experience initiates them into the reality of anything. Hallelujah. This is why when you go to a herbalist, he doesn't do too much of talking, correct? He just bamboozles you with experiences. And you have to just calm down and say, this man is serious. He's not a talkative. For instance, as soon as you enter his place, you see him and then you don't see him again and then you see him. And he says, sit down. You say, Baba, I'll do anything you want me to do. One experience. Hallelujah. 
You're going to be understanding certain powerful spiritual keys about the gospel of power. So miracles, signs, and wonders are the visible manifestation of the glory and the kingdom. Without the manifestation of the miraculous, I'm telling you the gospel of the kingdom, Christianity, what we know as um, Christianity is powerless. If an unbeliever stands and tells you that I believe in whatsoever I believe, and a Christian comes and says, look, Jesus is Lord over all. He came and demonstrated victory over sin and over Satan. Hallelujah. And you are able to demonstrate it. That there is this gentleman. Come sir. Just a minute. Hallelujah. That this guy comes in a drunkard. Comes in drinking and smoking. And one encounter with the power of God. No withdrawal symptoms. This guy does not have appetite for liquor again. Doesn't have appetite for smoking again. There is an experience. Are you listening to me? This guy, if you ask him to preach, he will tell you his experience. You know why many believers do not have messages? We lack the experience of the kingdom life. Hallelujah. This is why we borrow messages from YouTube, Google, all kinds of things. Authentic Christianity is supposed to be a byproduct of a tangible experience where you encounter the reality of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And so it's not enough to say this is this, this is that. There must be a proving, a validation. And this is why the Christian experience of many believers is not strong. Hallelujah. We can sing and chorus, Jesus is Lord. What manner of man is Jesus? He made the sea to... to to what he made the sea to he made the blind to see he made this and that to happen and many people with unbelief he made the blind to but you see it has not translated into a real christian experience so our unbelief has gotten so used to those songs we don't even expect it and when one person gets healed they say how are you sure are you sure they didn't pay this guy? They don't generate these people. You see, because we do not even expect that there is an experience. When a student is in school, you do what we call practicals, correct? When they are teaching you are sleeping, they say mix this with this, you are just yawning. But when you get to the lab, when you try it yourself, you just smile because that experience has crystallized in your mind. We have a powerless church because many believers do not have their knowledge of God backed up by an experience of the kingdom life. So we talk about the Holy Spirit without any experience of him. We talk about the concept of divine health. We talk about the concept of prosperity. We talk about the concept of the move of the spirit that God can transform a man, but there is no experience. Say after me, the kingdom of God it's not in words, but in power. Hallelujah. And the reason why the manifestation, the gospel of power is cast in certain Christian circles is because of the sacrifice. Listen to me. Because of the sacrifice it takes. Many people are unwilling to contend for more with God. And so whatever experience they've had of God, for many, it's just a salvation experience and a little of theological experience. And we camp around there. And the more we read theological books, we believe that our knowledge of theology is equivalent to the knowledge of God. And you see someone tells you, I've been a theologian for the past 10 years. There's nothing you will tell me in this Bible that I will not see. But you know that this guy is being influenced by the spirit of anger. He's telling you he knows everything in the Bible. One minute later, he just slaps you. And then he says, I, I, I do not even know. This guy needs, he needs help. Now he's telling you, I know everything. Hallelujah. And so we have many nice, wonderful messages. They give you the background. 
They give you every well-prepared sermon, but with no power to change people. Not even salvation. And you hear a lot of preachers say now, with this message, if you know you are not born again, I pray that as you go back home, the Lord will help you to do something about this message. Can, can you imagine? This is supposed to be an experience. Imagine an evangelist come on the pulpit. Imagine Jake's for God's sake. Comes up and preaches. I mean with power. And says, Jesus, save them. He healed them. He delivered them. Say so now as I wrap up my message, I, I want to encourage everyone who came from far and near for this mega crusade to take seriously what I've said. I, I ask the Lord to strengthen you and uh, bring you to a point where you can see reason in what I've said. Now, hold on, hold on. You are talking to someone who just left his shrine. Are you following me now? This guy just left his shrine with a solid, tangible experience. And he came and met you making noise. One, PA, one protocol here, one protocol there. And you stood and you were making noise. And his native doctor calls him and says, please come back. Just forget about these noisemakers. Hallelujah. Christianity begun supernaturally with power. A woman without the aid of a man conceives. That's, a, that's an experience. Hallelujah. A man walks on water, defying certain laws dies and brings himself back to life the entire span of the christian experience is rooted not just in word but in power the demonstration of power now please listen because i'm, I'm soon oh you will enjoy this message tonight believe me whenever i say power many church folks all you just think about is somebody falling down let's do it come Two people, one usher, one somebody. Pastor Alpha, you are an usher. Come, come, sir. Do you know how to fall down? All right, just fall down. No, 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 hold on. You are getting. Okay, are you ready? Now, oh, yeah, fall down. This is what the church calls power. Shame on us. This is not what I'm calling power. So if you are thinking I'm talking of falling down, no, that's not. You are, you are in for a shocker. This is not power. For many people, this is just church jamboree. Because demons can do that. A powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom of God. Many of you are not here because of our nice messages. Something happened to somebody you know, you, you, you know and you said, Kai, no, I will come and find out. Even if it's not true. We had a gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim. Remember him? Some of you. That guy slept in the grave three days to get the power of invincibility. Three days in the grave. Saw dead men wake up and come out of their graves. They told him to lie down there. You don't get up. You don't do anything. The spirit of the, of the man in the grave that was lying, they said they wanted it to come upon him. After three days, this guy got up. He could look at a baby like my little sister that came and shared testimony here and shoot her. No conscience. That guy came for koinonia and sat down outside. So imagine if we just came. A beautiful suit. Say, Hallelujah, somebody. Now this guy slept in the grave. Three days. A Christian experience. Elijah said, look, we are talking too much. If God be God, let him be known. If Baal be God, let him be known. Let's go and meet upon the mountain and settle this case once and for all. He said, the God that answers by fire, that is God. Elijah was so confident. He asked the people, he said, shout, maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he went strolling. And then when it was his time, he said, set me 12 stones. Let me show you something. I didn't come to discuss jargons with you. Set me 12 stones. He said, pour water on it so that you won't say by some chemical analysis, something happened and so pour water on it. Hmm. The Bible says fire came from heaven, licked up the water, burnt everything. 
And Elijah said, now that you know, none of you will survive. He said, follow them. And he slayed all of them. Hallelujah. The church was advanced. Because men, you think the disciples were intelligent people. They didn't go to any Bible school. Jesus sends them. He said, go in my name. He said, as you go, go to the Lordship of Israel. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Freely you have received. Freely give. The Bible says they came back rejoicing. Their first thing, he didn't say they clapped for me. I didn't know I could speak Greek like that. He said even the demons, that was their first testimony, were subject to us through thy name. Hallelujah. Many, we have all kinds of justifications because of the sacrifice it takes to contend for that dimension of God. So many people begin to give excuses. They say, it's not my calling. Did you see Jesus sending the 70? What did he call them? He told all of them, as you go, do the same thing. Listen, the fact that there are caterers does not mean every woman should not know how to cook. Correct? There are people called into certain ministries. The gifts of healing. But it does not mean, well, don't you cook in your house? All of these things people give for lack of fire. We try to give all kinds of sugar-coated messages, criticizing people who are moving in genuine power. Now, note, note, note genuine power because I have another well-prepared dimension. You should know me by now. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have been trained to contend with anything that is above and beyond our ordinary. How can a man just get healed? The lady shared a testimony now. How can an ovarian cyst disappear? Some of you are just saying, Jare, go and test with a real doctor. You see it? That's, that's a problem with a lot of people. You never were surprised how the growth formed from nowhere. But how it went down is what is surprising you. Someone will be sitting and his hand will start swelling. Nobody will ask from where the swelling came from. But when it goes down, we begin to complain. Someone had an ear. The ear starts eating up. You never say, is this not supernatural? But when no ear starts coming back, he said, like, like this one. At least Jesus, oh, we know. Malchus' ear, this is Jesus. So the church has been trained to reject anything that comes with power. But it is in that demonstration of power that Satan is silenced. Moses was a stammerer. He said, oh God. And God was angry. He said, in God's mind, he's saying, you don't need too much of talking. You don't know the experience I'm giving you. Pharaoh does not need English or Hebrew. Pharaoh needs a demonstration. Ten signs. And Pharaoh let them go. Not jargons. Ten signs. Demonstrations of solid power. Today in the church in Nigeria, learn how to speak your English. Know how to add your vowels and put all the consonants together. May God increase and bless you. But let me tell you the truth. When it comes to real transformation, if you want to be part of what God is doing, you need more than that. Brother, demons don't hear English. There's one language they understand. The Bible says, through the greatness of thy power, will thy enemies submit themselves to you. Not through the greatness of your English. Through the greatness of your power. Hallelujah. When Moses went before, before Pharaoh, it was a contention of mantles, not mouth. They threw it on the mantle of the spirit and the mantle of witches. That was a contention. Are you listening to me? The gospel of power. Powerless Christianity will not advance the kingdom. One of the reasons why many churches have complained when they see crowds like this, for instance. They say, are you sure? These people are just coming like that. That's the point. Read Mark 1, 2, 3. I don't have time. I have other things. This is still an introduction. There are other things I want to talk about. Listen. In every man, we have a community and a nation and a world. Humanity is always in need of solutions. Are you listening to me? Let me give you the secret of solid ministry. Humanity is always in need. 
This is why God sends us as the light of the world and the salt of the earth. For as long as there is power upon you to meet the needs of men, they will come from everywhere to hear the word of the Lord and to be blessed and transformed. A native doctor is in the bush. I, I, I spoke to a guy, I think I shared it with you, uh, Jakes. I, I spoke to a guy who came last week. This guy had gone to almost all the major shrines in this country. Someone took him there. Hallelujah. He went to the shrines and they took him to some pastors and they couldn't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Couldn't do anything about it. Shame on the church for allowing Satan just to prevail and we laugh over it and we say I'm not called into this area. It's not my calling. It's not this and that. Which one is your calling? What is your calling? To talk? Say my own is just to counsel people. Don't you know that people act the way they act as a result of the influence of demons? Say amen. amen. According to Mark 1, 2, and 3, the biblical strategy for publicity to bring unbelievers and to bring people is the miraculous. The biblical, I'll show you. Let's, let's go to the book of Mark quickly. Anywhere there is a true manifestation of the kingdom and the glory of God. Now don't you say crowd does not matter. Crowd does not matter in that um, God judges from a higher perspective. But without the people, who will you touch? The ministry is not to sit. Are you listening to me? All through the life of Jesus till he went to heaven. He always had people around him that he could minister the word to. Mark. Mark 1. Sorry. Are you there? Verse 21. The first recorded miracle of Jesus. As soon as he was commissioned, without delay, he casted out devils. Without delay. Mark 1 21. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in a certain, in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit. Are you, is that in your Bible? So who does Jesus confront in the synagogue? An unclean spirit. Question. The demons in him, why do they allow him to come to the synagogue? Didn't they know that Jesus was going to be there? Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? And so on and so forth. Verse 25, one to read. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Let's see the effect. 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? And what new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits. And they do obey him. 28. Please read it if it's in your Bible. And throughout the whole region of Galilee. Question. Who were those who took that news to the region of Galilee? It's in your Bible. One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. Every time people are touched by God, they are too grateful to keep quiet. The gospel was not supposed to be a silent thing. There is an effect that the power of the Holy Ghost is supposed to do in you that will stop you from being quiet. That's how the gospel spread. In the days of God's generals, their newspapers were full of the exploits of the church. Correct? Correct? But right now, our exploit, our church is, is full. If you see a story about a pastor, it's how he raped a lady, stole from a church, did something, or one, one saga somewhere happening. Or that they suddenly caught him, wanted to rob his oil, and then some one member caught him, and there's trouble. And in the evening, verse 32, I want you to help me. Maybe I'm the one who is not seeing it well. And in the evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased 
and all those who were for those of you who say ah whenever the I mean, the power of God comes and people, their, people are being delivered. They say, oh, there's no need for this. Go and read your Bible very well and tell me whether Jesus did not cast out devils. Hallelujah. Mm. Those who were possessed with demons. Verse 33 again, one to read. Look at this description. A city gathered at the door. At the door. At the door. Jesus just sat down quietly and they were just bringing the sick and the sick were going out. They saw one madman that had troubled people in the city. They said, come please, this way. The next thing the guy came out saying, say, how are you? Good afternoon. Another man next, he entered and came out. These guys entered the city and people said, no, we have to come and see. Critics said, I will go. Women tied their day. Let's, see, let's go and see this thing. And the whole city, no posters, no mic, no, P, no PR department. Are you following me now? The biblical tool to attract people to see the works and the wonders of God is the manifestation of power. Hmm. Today there are evangelists in the world who do a lot of things and do not believe in the ministry of power. If an evangelist does not believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, he's not an evangelist. You should go and sit down. It should be a lecture and a Bible school. Verse 34. And he healed many that were sick. Is that correct? Of diverse diseases. And did what? Cast out many demons. They were not small. And permitted not the demons to speak. Because they knew him. Hallelujah. Now verse 37. He had to be running away from people. And when they had found him. They said unto him, what? All men seek for you. In other words, Jesus was hiding. The man said, you better hide. I have a serious problem. I will sit down and die. Let me tell you, if you offer real solution, people will travel from anywhere and come to receive. If you plant your church in a river, the harbor is not living in a river. What takes people there? They drop their jeep and trek from here to like ABU gate. A dignified man. He said, I must get out of this problem. I'm tired. See, let me tell you. Every time you criticize the power of the Holy Spirit, the genuine power of God, you are a wicked person. Because you do not know those who are touched and those who are blessed. You see everybody seated in Koinonia. You don't know how many people have gone through things. Whenever you see demons leaving people, you don't know the relief this brings. Hallelujah. I assure you, if you are not receiving anything, you would have been tired of coming here by now. It's not because you love me. That may be part of it, but there is a bigger reason. You know that God is in the midst of his people doing wonders. Hallelujah. Let's finish up. All men seek for thee. 38, and he said unto them, let us go into the next town that I may preach there also. For there, therefore came I forth. Are you ready now? Verse 39, I want to read. I want to show you the secret of real ministry that many pastors have not read. And I'll tell you why soon. 39, and he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and did what? There we see it again. There we see it again. He preached in their synagogues. It looks like the synagogue had a lot of demons. He casted out demons. Because the talkatives were speaking Greek. 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him, saying unto him, If thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. 43. Please read something. And he, and he strictly charged him, and forthwith he sent him away. And he said unto him, See that thou sayest nothing to a man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony. 45. Please read. One to read. In so much that Jesus could no longer enter openly into a city. Today, 
We have mechanisms of holding people by force. You don't come to our church again. Go back and read your Bible. Shame on the church for this nonsense we do all around. There are churches today that have ID cards to make sure their members don't go any other place. Insecure men of God moving here and there. They won't go and study the Bible and contend for true spiritual power. They just see you in one fellowship and they come. They say, me, what I'm giving you is not enough. Of course it's not enough. That's the only reason why they'll run around looking for real solutions. So, so the prophecy I'm giving you didn't work. It didn't work. You are just too afraid to tell him. It didn't work. Because God didn't send him. He's not a prophet. Pressure made him to say what God didn't say. Hallelujah. There are, there are all kinds of membership jargons. Go to places like Abuja and see. A building like this is another church. One is another church. There are ushers are standing eyeing one another. If somebody's coming, they say, hello, how are you? God bless you. And immediately they finish. The pastor calls them and queries them. And say, when has the church of God become a marketing jargon? Shame on the church. We spend millions of God's money on newspapers. Come and see the man of power. You are not a real man of power. Because when Ben Hinn is coming to Nigeria, all the newspapers beg for an audience. What is wrong with you? You are running where God has not sent you. Powerless Christians who will not humble themselves and listen. Hallelujah. The Bible says Jesus was begging and said, don't tell anybody. Let me tell you something. Have you had people complain and say, it's because our church is too far. For say our church is near, it's not true. It's not true. It's not true. All those things are just jargons. It's not true. Say for say God gave me a land in Port Harcourt or Lagos. Abba, I would have been suffering. You will be surprised. You think people are idiots. You see, men of God are so used to deceiving people that they think people don't have brains again. Do you know what it means? For someone to prepare from 4 o'clock and run and come and stand and say he's coming for koinonia. You really believe he's just coming because of certain men? And families, there are people here right now that came some from Abuja. There are people already calling me, coming from all over this country for the miracle service. You really believe that they like the way my face looks? Or they don't have anything to do with their lives? For the kingdom of God. Is not in the excellency of speech, but in the demonstration of power. John sent. He said, go and tell Jesus. Go and ask him. Are you the one to come? It was the same John that said that the one who sent me said upon the one whom I see a dove. He is the lamb. He is the one that said, behold the lamb. Now John was under pressure and he said, go and ask this guy. In other words, I expect a level of demonstration. Now I'm in the prison. I've not seen it. Is he the one? And the moment they spoke to Jesus, we'll read that later on. Jesus just looked at them and said, watch me. He healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, healed people and said, go and tell John what you have seen. In other words, what in your law should be the character of the Messiah? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's read verse 32 of chapter 3, Mark. Are you there? 32. And the multitude sat about him. There you see multitude again. Is that correct? And the multitude. Jump to verse 4. Number 1. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered to him a what? Great multitude. Are you seeing there again? The desert multitude. The mountain, multitude. The seaside, multitude. Everywhere, multitude. Why? Because there was a manifestation of the kingdom. A manifestation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. So why don't we have Christians coming for, to our faculties? Because you people are not praying for a demonstration of the kingdom. Now when I talk about a demonstration of the kingdom, I'll show you what I mean. A demonstration of the kingdom is not falling down. 
Many people have reduced the Christian experience such that when you are saying in the name of Jesus, your days of captivity are over. Everybody's looking. Nobody fell down. They just said, this word, Jerry. This guy should go and sit down. Hallelujah. Miracles draw the people and then Jesus saves them. The biblical tool for evangelism is the miraculous. Whenever there is an outpouring of miracles, an outpouring of signs, wonders, breakthrough, genuine breakthrough, that people come in and they receive the touch, the tangible hand of God, transformation in their lives, their families, their finances, their health, their understanding, their passion for God, then the kingdom has come. Hallelujah. Miracles are the tools that draw people to Jesus. And then the reality of the gospel reaches out to them. The clearest manifestation of the glory of God is in miracles and signs and wonders. Not many people have had the opportunity to go to crusade grounds. Otherwise, if you go to a typical village crusade ground, you will appreciate the place of miracles. Because while you are interpreting, the people are sleeping. In their mind, they are waiting for something more than your talk. You say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the other person says, we are being so they are sleeping. They are not interested in your talk. While you are talking, it's only the women that will say, mm, and that's just because they have a heart for God. But when one crippled person lifts his crutch, every sleeper will wake up. Sleep will disappear one time. Hallelujah. When a, a known herbalist in that land comes in and you look at the man and cast out that devil and the man goes to sit down. Let me tell you something. The next day, you will have to beg for a bigger venue. Reinhard Bonke was giving a biography of his ministry. He said God sent him to go to one African country and start a crusade. When he went there, he met a pastor with just a little congregation of maybe about a hundred people. And he said, God told me to go to the stadium. The pastor laughed at, at him and said, me, I have not gone to the stadium. I don't have that kind of grace. Renard Bonke prepared and brought all his team. They rented the stadium. And when he got in, he saw only the church members of that man. Imagine a stadium that can take about 50,000 people. And then you see just one little seat that is for dignitaries. With the members of the church, they are just singing. Renard Bonke said he was disappointed. Nobody knew him. Why? It's not that nobody knew him. Nobody had seen the demonstration of the kingdom through him. Because he said right there, he began to minister to them. And about five or seven notably sick people were there. He said by the next day, the crowd had turned to about 5,000 people. News. News. Let me tell you something. Genuine news does not need GSM to spread. Genuine, if it's genuine news, you just hold on. For instance, if they say your accommodation is open this night, ladies, many of you, even if you don't have phone, you will hear. That's how the miraculous can bring people to Jesus Christ. Somebody will go out of his way to travel a distance and say, I have a story for you. God did something in the life of my mother. My father was divorced. He vowed that he would never come back home. But the prayers went on him and this guy cannot sleep again he's calling my old mother my uh, uh, sweetheart or my honey or my sugar and your old mother say hey, hey the demonstration of the kingdom when two of them hold their hands and come to church your unbelieving brothers will start thinking twice hallelujah say i believe in miracles say it i believe in miracles I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Your neighbor is involved in witchcraft and divination and all kinds of things. And you pack in and you do an introductory prayer session around the house to highlight them that one who carries true fire has come. 
Katabakatalabosatabalia. And they receive the reverberation from their house. And then you go out and meet the man and say, I'm your neighbor. And by the grace of God, I've paid for two years. The man knows for sure that he's in trouble in that remaining two years. When people say, hey, this woman, they gossip about it. They say, this woman is a witch. I saw her. What are you doing about it? And you see believers so helpless. Your child is coughing. They say, I know. They want to make money with him. Hey, this is how this boy will die now. What you need is the gospel of power. That an ambassador steps into that place and says, what is going on here? And they say, this woman wants to, they want to do this and that from the village. Work out kinds of witchcraft. You say, really? They say, oh, thank God we are here. It's a simple issue. Let the boy. See, the Bible says, Jesus entered and saw Peter's mother-in-law sick with a fever. The Bible didn't say he prayed. He held and lifted. I said, go and serve us, Jerry. We are hungry. Power. Kapa talabaya. Through the greatness of thy power will thy enemies submit themselves. You just go to the realm of the spirit and find out how many demons and principalities work every week to make sure you don't get blessed here. And, wonder, and then you wonder why we live as if Satan does not exist here. Because Jesus is alive. Hmm. Hallelujah. We travel around all the time. All the time. Many of you, where you want to travel, you don't talk. So let me not sin against God in case anything happens. Sorry, sir. You the last person sitting here. Mm, what kind of life is that? You look at the driver and see one guy with a drowsy eye. Say, me, let's ask, oh, is this guy well? Is this guy well? See, we need a church with genuine, authentic power. Hallelujah. The miraculous opens up the hearts of people to receive Christ. That's why after the miracle service, when we make altar calls, there are some brothers you see coming out, you know it's God that brought this one. The way the guy is even coming out, he's even surprised. What is bringing me out and he's still coming? You see him standing and wondering as if someone brought him out. Of course, it's the power. It's called anakazo, the compelling power of the spirit. Hallelujah. But the balance here is that you don't center your ministry around miracles. You center your ministry around Jesus. This is where my preaching of the balance starts. Because you see, the miraculous is not a teaching, it's a demonstration. You just teach it to help people comprehend. Hallelujah. So when your ministry is all about miracles. Miracles are a tool. Are you listening to me? Hear me. If your demonstration of miracles does not lead men to Jesus Christ, God is not glorified in that activity that is going on. Please write it. If at the end of all your display of power and falling down and rolling and sweeping the carpet, people do not come to the genuine knowledge of Jesus Christ, you did not glorify God. I don't care how charismatic it was. So you don't center your ministry around Jesus, around miracles, but Jesus. He said, if I be lifted up, if I, not if wheelchairs be lifted up, not if crutches be lifted up, not if tumors be lifted up, not if dead people be lifted up, if I, Jesus, the son of the living God be lifted up. I will draw all men. So miracles are tools. Are you listening to me? They are tools that bring people to Jesus Christ. If they do not come to the practical saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, then something was wrong. Hallelujah. But now we see that there is what? An error in the church. Still among the charismatics. That an emphasis has switched away from who? Jesus Christ. I want to ask you a question. How many times have you heard preachers mention the name of Jesus in many pulpits? 
for many people it was last year and they preached four times into the new year they raised offering they talked about vow they talked about first food prophet's offering but they did not mention the name jesus hallelujah they played documentaries for hour about the man they just saw slow motion he stands and heals the sick and does every kind of thing he wants to do and then he does everything and at the end of it nobody says anything about jesus and people share the man and he's so happy jesus is absent hallelujah jesus must become the center of our ministry not apostles not prophets not miracles not money not wisdom but jesus say jesus is the center of my life and everything that i do say jesus is the center in koinonia yes may god forbid the day that we'll forget about jesus and start marketing ourselves and marketing power and marketing joshua selman and marketing all kinds of things may god forbid that day where jesus will stop becoming our focus either because of the levels of grace that he has brought us and if i be lifted up i will draw all men by myself the reward for lifting him up is that he grants the miracles that bring the people to him because he said i will draw hallelujah there are so many people in the church right now now listen because of this pressure of miracles miracles right now listen there are so many people under pressure it takes a while write it for the miraculous to begin to manifest in your life it takes the dealings of god it takes the pruning of god you must be proven genuinely i'm telling you if you want to walk in authentic power authentic power responds to a, a, a dealing with god many of you see men of god who are anointed hear their stories and their sacrifices first and then you will know why god has rewarded them if i begin to tell some of you the sacrifices and the things that are done in the secret for the power that you see forget about the suit don't be deceived by it behind every glory there is a story are you listening to me i'm talking of authentic christian power but right now there are many men of god they don't talk about jesus they have no regard for the world but there are terrible manifestations of miracles in their churches something is wrong say after me something is wrong and this is what i'll be rounding up with we'll stop wherever we can stop it's a series i don't want to rush it i want to take it in depth so that you get it hallelujah as a result of the craze knowing now that the miraculous brings members and for many pastors more members means more what more money thank you so you know more members mean more money more honor more prestige when you stand in the midst of other pastors say you how many members that here small boy i should i can i sit with you how many five thousand i say here we can sit now i'm trusting god for expansion and you hear men of god sit down how many members do you have how many members and then the other one who has only 30 gets intimidated and the guy say you see Three months later, the guy is breaking. He said he caught one principle. Oh God, tell us. Tell us what principle did you get? Hallelujah. The tragedy of witchcraft in the church. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I will not hide it from you. I love you too much to lie to you. Many men of God, you see, manifesting what they call power have gotten these things from demons and devils and witches right now there are all kinds of any man whether prophet or not if you cannot see if you cannot hear sorry for you and the bible says there are people with itching ears and they love it so right now when people come in for meeting and they see the man of god say let's go straight to the word he said ah no falling down, no nothing. Oh God, let's go. You just go this way. I'll come out. We'll meet later and disappear from this place. 
say, what kind of boring man is this? And so you put pressure on the men of God. Although they are still working with God. See, let me tell you something. There are three kinds of men. There are three kinds of error in the body of Christ that God must resolve. Especially for a lot of people who want to just jump into ministry. Hold on and listen to me first. Number one, we have witches and wizards in the church. Direct occultists. They have sold their souls to the devil. God didn't call them. They are agents of darkness. They came from the pit of hell. That's category one. Their job is to come and mislead a lot of people. They are occultists. Are you listening to me? Different men of God. I'm telling you, they have mixed their wine with water. I read an article, verified article. You read it, Jangfa, yesterday. About a woman in Port Harcourt who empowers most of the men of God in Abuja, including a popular bishop. Now, I don't just read junks and come and talk to you. Are you listening to me? I have common sense. I know that this message will go as far as it can go. So if I talk to you, these things are verified. Hallelujah. Thank God for this message. Great men of God. It's a, it's a cult. It's a movement. Registration fee is 100,000, first and foremost. And which is easy when they collect your offering for two weeks. Is that not enough? Don't pity them. It's your offering that, that went there. After that, what happens? The Bible, I said the Bible, um, the article, praise God. The article says that they now commit all kinds of immoral acts with that woman shameful immoral acts that should not even be mentioned and then after that there are different kinds of oil and according to this is somebody that was going to be initiated and had to draw back the most popular oil right now is called seeing oil they wash your eyes with it and you just look you can see everything hallelujah everything That's why you see every man just looks. You are this. You who just got married. And he moves in dramatic accuracy. Because with that in two weeks, he can triple the membership. Because the truth is people have needs. Are you listening to me? People have genuine needs. When they see real solutions, they will go. They will go. They have genuine needs. And this man is receiving money. Of course, if somebody wants to spend 10 million on his health and you got him healed, ah, can't he take half of it and say, Pastor, I would have gone to India. Now you have helped me. Let me reduce your body in the ministry. If, if in one day you can make 5 million, is that not a lucrative business? Answer me. And then he buys another one. Rub it on his eyes. These men sleep with women and do all kinds of things minutes to their, their administration to maintain some of these powers. Please listen to me. Hallelujah. Then the next one, they call it do as I say. Aren't you amazed at how daft the members of many churches are? Anything they ask them to do. The newspaper one time recorded how that some people, members went to church naked. Remember the article? Some people who don't read newspapers. Hallelujah. Members, imagine a father and a mother say, are you ready now? Kids, let's go. That's what happened. Madness in the body of Christ. They entered the church naked. No, see, when I say naked, I'm not talking of Jesus of Nazareth kind of naked. Naked. Can you imagine? Everybody in Koinonia here naked. What is wrong with us? Yes, but that's what happened. That cannot be normal. The Spirit of God is not an idiot. We have misrepresented the Holy Spirit to the, to the world. God is, not, God is not a daft person. Please, let's not make Jesus Christ look like a stupid person. Hallelujah. And when you get that kind of oil, you can do anything to anybody. That's why you can see a man who buy his house. They just cut the scissors of the house. Next week is the pastor that packed inside. Brother, what happened? They say seed. Now, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. 
when, when you see genuine things, you celebrate them. Manipulation and witchcraft. I was told of a man of God that saw a beautiful plot of land belonging to one of his members. The guy just pressed, hey, hi. And the lady said, what is wrong? And I said, you will die now. And she called her brother in UK. He said, let's give this man the land. Though. They gave the guy land. He erected a structure quick on it. Now they are, they are in the court. The land is worth 80 million. The man manipulated them into sowing it to him. What if that man were your father? You will not enjoy for years, Kenan, because one man of God has come to manipulate your, your, the, dest, the financial destiny of the family. Are you listening to me? And then the next oil is specifically for ladies. Hallelujah. According to the article, they say it's called touch and follow. I have been amazed at the, the vulnerability of many ladies to men of God. It looks like they don't, men don't have wombs. They don't get pregnant. So a lady who knows that she can be vulnerable, you see a man of God just looks at her. They come for conferences and welfare. The ladies that serve them, after serving me water like this, you just look at her and write as if God spoke. Later they come to meet you in the hotel room. Man of God, your message was powerful. The next thing, that lady won't come out of that hotel room again. kind of nonsense is going on in, in the church i was speaking with jake the other day i said i don't know how people reason aside from the fear of god i was discussing with jake i said what if i tell you now let me sleep with you and you run away and say it's not good hey you can imagine this is what i think about oh i don't know how the men of god talk to the ladies I was telling Jakes, I said, Jakes, now imagine I tell this girl I want to sleep with you and the lady say, ha, you preached this against us and you ran away. Your, your prayer now will be hey, let nobody know. It's not, you don't want to sleep again. <laughs> this is how I'm thinking. It, it's my simple thought. It may not be your own, it's my own. In one day, hear me, in one day, that which you have labored for years to build will crash in one day. Bible says, how are the mighty fallen? That's why the Bible taught about the strange woman. He said, she has cast down many. Yea, many mighty men have been wounded by her. So for those of you who cannot see anything, they are passing scared. You are already smiling and warming up that you want to do ministry. You better go and close up yourself and flog it out with destiny. Otherwise, you will receive a root shock. Hallelujah. See a lady, tell her to come and spend weekend in your house. You say you are, you are prayer partners. What, what is partner? What is prayer partner? Stop it. Stop it. If you are doing it, stop it. I'm not joking. See, this is what kills grace. So you see a man who is fiery. Tomorrow you won't hear anything about him again. I'm not saying don't be nice, don't relate. We relate with people. But that you must take an oath before God and say, Oh Lord, my God, by your mercies, would you help me? It's not by the strength of a man. But let me tell you something there must be a determination. All the guys, stand up. Stand up. Say, In the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands. Say, In the name of Jesus. I receive grace to walk in true holiness. And walk in the authentic power of God. In the name of Jesus. I make up my mind. Not to defile myself. By the grace of God. And the power of the Holy Ghost. I receive grace. To say no. To sin. To say no. To anything that will eat up my destiny. I have a glorious destiny. I have nations to conquer. And no Delilah will tear my destiny down. God bless you. Please sit down. Ladies, stand up. This is Koinonia. Stand up. Please, we are, we are not joking here. This is a training camp. Inside and outside, stand up. We need to take this thing seriously. Many of you, when you hear this thing said, you just laugh. 
you don't know the severity of Satan eating up a man's destiny in one day. Lift up your hands, ladies. And say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace and power above and against immorality. Say, in the name of Jesus, no man, no pastor, no prophet, no apostle would deceive me and mislead me to abort my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace. I receive strength to run with the spirit of Elijah away from every appearance of evil. I receive wisdom. I receive courage. And I receive power. God bless you. Be seated and celebrate Jesus in this place. Let's know that there can be real Christians in the body of Christ. For once, let's trust the power that comes upon the altar. That is not every anointing that is polluted. There must be something in your life that distinguishes that you are a genuine child of God. There must be something. The gospel of power. Many of these men, the women in their churches don't rest. You see all the sisters, they are always looking down when he's preaching. Because they are surprised at what he's saying. He has already booked the lady he will sleep with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now the guy is standing and speaking and the lady is wondering. I know many people won't like me. But I will say it. You know me. We will say it. Koinonia is where you hear it as it is. Hallelujah. So there are all kinds of anointings because people have been pressured. All kinds of anointing. There is the one for pulling crowd. Pulling crowd. You rub it on your chairs. You rub it everywhere. Members come and sit down and they cannot understand themselves again. You see people fighting at home. You must come to our church. You must come to our church. Our pastor must do this. Shut up! Is it only your church that God is there? Give people peace. Let the Holy Spirit bring them, not your disturbance. There are many of you now, some people are angry with you because you didn't come to their church. What kind of nonsense is this? Some of you are even angry at some others because they didn't come for koinonia. See, you see. It's pray. If God cannot bring them, you won't bring them. Say you won't come and see our pastor Abi. You are the ones that make them think we are fake. Hallelujah. It's a year of supernatural exploits. So God is cleaning the house now. Hallelujah. So that when you see, I'm not teaching you to be judgmental. I'm just telling you the truth. Hallelujah. These men don't preach Christ. They don't love God. They have no respect for altar calls. But you see a manifestation of fearful miracles. Brother, something is wrong. I can tell you that. These men have convincing and enticing power. And so it's difficult for you to discern. Hallelujah. Say no man will deceive me. I'm not saying any man you just see fall down in. You, you go for one program and somebody falls down. No, they must not behave like me. People have their behaviors. Are you listening to me? You can meet a man who preach and say, oh, when God says, go, you move. And he says, it's fake. He's not fake. It's just differences in personality. Are you listening to me? A man can preach and jump on this pulpit and sit down. And I say, this guy is fake. He may not be fake. Oh. So don't you just think, you announce that, ah, I went to one program yesterday. That man must be fake. No. You must not have a man that is as serious as me to show that he's serious with God. No. Hallelujah. But there, there is always grace because some of you will be walking in the past. So that's the second category of people. Innocent men who got to mix their wine. The third category, please listen. And this is even the most dangerous. The third category are very innocent people. Listen to me. Because of the innocence, the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man, lest he be the partakers of their sins. Hallelujah. 
There are many people that come. Many of you like it. You like laying of hands. Anybody you just you say, oh, sir, the oil of your life. And you receive what you cannot explain now. From the day they laid hands on you, a realm was opened up to you. You know this is not the Holy Spirit that opened that realm. So these are the innocent people. Hallelujah. They are innocent. They are naive. But they are entering experiences already that their genuine Christian experience is not supposed to give. And they are moving in dimensions that are faulty. They do not even know. Hallelujah. There are many people with that kind of thing. Praise God. There was a time Ben Hinn's brother, a man came, a proper homosexual. He's a minister too. Proper homosexual. Not, not one who is struggling with something. I'm not talking of those who are struggling with habits and God is helping them. Are you listening to me? The difference is there are people who are struggling with things. All right? But you see, their heart is always open for God to help them. There are others who the Bible says their heart has been seared with hot iron. They have come to a point where they are non-repentant. That's the kind. And he came and he was going to lay his hand on Ben Hinn's brother. And Ben Hinn's brother just looked and saw his spirit. Together with the man's hand, he held his hand. He said, no way, not on my head. See, have you not seen that there are certain people, the moment some hands are laid on them, they carry on some attitude and characteristic. Suddenly, the, they laid hands on you and you cannot see women and leave them in peace again. They laid hands on you and you start desiring men. Your roommate has packed out. They left only you in the room. Come for miracle service. Something is wrong. Break your pride. I don't care what fellowship or what church you are leading. And come. You see, and another thing is, men of God are not open to admit that there are challenges like this. I'm fine, glory. No, you are not fine. You need help. You need help. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are some of you seated here innocently who became victims of some of these people? The spirit of Christ when imparted upon you will bring a true life of holiness and righteousness. We love Jesus and all your demonstration of power and everything will be more of him and less of you. And so could it be that some of you traveled to Port Harcourt, Abuja, or one man of God came from Ghana, one prophet. The day he laid hands on you, he just scattered your destiny into two. The Lord brings deliverance tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. This thing has happened to some of our families. Are you not, are there not some prophets that came to your house? From that day, your father cannot become himself again. Your mother cannot become herself again. They, you will carry your money like this. They are paying your father. He, your mother does not even know. He's going to go and meet the prophet. In, uh, are some of your families not suffering it? Say yes. Because it's not a lie. They brought one candle. They brought one prophetic oil for them to buy. Your father will beat you and slap you and say you must rub that oil. Oh. You must rub it. They said something is wrong. The next thing, he had three cars. Now it's only one. Where did two go? The prophet will drive it and enter your house. And say, how are you doing? Is well. He knows when to discern when they pay your father. And he just comes. Your mother is tired of him. He comes. He says, sorry, I don't like salt in my own fish. Your father says, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Go and make you fish for the man of God. They come into families and wreck that families. I assure you, they are devilish. I don't care who. Because the true spirit of Christ. The Bible says he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not breaking apart. So on one side, we need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. As a demonstration of the kingdom. But then we must be careful. Lest our entire attention be upon miracles. And then we allow pressure. That's why I told you that the authentic power of God comes with a process. We are talking with John Fire yesterday and I told him, I said, see, the way the church is, listen to me. I read my Bible. Oh. Do you know there are many churches right now, because of the way the church is, there is even no need to read your Bible. Because they don't even give any respect for the Bible. The members don't read Bibles. I follow me now. Nothing happens. And then we have the generation of iPads. 
You can buy your iPad, but carry a hard copy Bible and come for Koinonia with it. Hard copied Bible. Because very soon now, you stop coming with iPad, you come with phone alone. Very soon, you just put two tracks on your pocket. And the next thing, you're on your way to hellfire. Technology should not make us idiots. Carry your Bible and come to church. I know you will criticize me, but I will say it. If your pastor uses iPad, please don't criticize him. Are you listening to me? There are great men of God, Pastor Chris, Christ Embassy, um, House on the Rock, different men of God. My friend, Pastor Pete Rock. And there's nothing wrong. Buy your iPad. But I'm saying when you get the madness that you cannot study the word, you cannot do anything. Carry your Bible, carry a good notebook. You don't carry your iPad to class. You carry an exercise book. As your teacher is writing, you write. That's how you become a good student. Carry iPad and see how many courses you carry over. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Next week, I will consider what the Bible calls the doctrine of Balaam. We are going to consider it next week. And you will see how that Balaam was a real prophet. But something happened on the way. To the point that the Bible detests three times. The Bible talks about the way of Balaam. It talks of the error of Balaam. It talks of the doctrine of Balaam. From a, an error, it became a way. It became a doctrine. We we'll examine it. How that Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Ammon, to go and curse the nation of Israel. And God told him no. But they send royal people with money. And the guy said, hey, oh, you people should sleep first. Let me talk to God again. And you will see that this attitude of men of God has been in the Bible. And the Bible warns in Revelation. To the church in Pagamos. It says, the doctrine of Balaam. You know what Balaam did? I will share it with you next week. Balaam made the, the Moabites, Moabite women... To be meandering around the boundary of the Israelites. And the men looked at them and began to sleep with them. And they brought a curse upon themselves. Balaam said, I can't curse them. But I can advise you, Balak, to tell them to do something that will make them curse themselves. And you will see the prototype of what many prophets are carrying in Nigeria. It's in the Bible. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Just warm yourself for two minutes in the spirit. Inside and outside. Just warm yourself in the spirit. The word of God. Building us. Making us strong. Giving us wisdom. Say Lord I open myself. To the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, pray. Say, Lord, move through me. Let me become a manifestation of the glory in miracles, in signs, in wonders. Pray. Say, Lord, I open up myself to heal the sick, to cast out devils, that there be a demonstration of the Spirit through my life. Pray, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you and He has anointed you to preach glad tidings to the poor, to set the captives free, to deliver the oppressed, to raise the banner of authentic power, genuine power, the power of the Holy Ghost. Say, Lord, walk through me do impossible things through my life lift your hands and say these hands are blessed say these hands heal the sick these hands will liberate nations these hands will liberate families lift your hands to the heavens say lord these hands will open up the gates of nations these hands will bring the power of god to bear these hands will enthrone Christ. Say, Lord, move through these hands. Move through this body. Rededicate your body as an instrument 
for the glory. Rededicate your body. Say, Lord, move through my body. Every fiber of my cell, a superconductor of power. I open the gates of healing, the gates of breakthrough, the gates of prosperity. Pray in the name of Jesus. Say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm not ordinary. I'm a walking wonder. I have the name of Jesus. I go in that name. I do exploits. It's a year of supernatural exploits. Lord, I do exploits. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 Now you're going to pray and say, Lord, put your power upon my lips. That when I speak to sinners or the sick or the oppressed, let a two-edged sword. The Bible says he was upon the horse and out of his mouth proceeded. He said, I have given you the tongue of the learned. Pray. Say, Lord, anoint my lips. Let me release the fire, the power of the Holy Ghost. As I bless, bless the man. As I prophesy, let there be a performance. As I speak the word of faith, the word of healing, the word of comfort. Make sure you are praying. Rekoto sekete in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and we're out of here. I'd like you to pray. We're going to lift up all the men of God that have been derailed. Are you listening to me? In a vain quest for power, some of them are your pastors. If you love them, lift your voice. Pray for the church of God. They may not be your church members. We don't believe in just denomination and membership, but the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Help the pastors in Abuja. Help the pastors in Lagos. Help the prophets in Portacot. Oh God, we pray. Deliver them from witchcraft. Deliver them from error. Pray for your pastor. You know he loves God. You know she loves God. They are just being derailed. Say, my God, according to your mercy, bring them back. That they will denounce the hidden works of unrighteousness. Pray for them. Don't condemn them. Don't condemn them. They love the Lord. They are just being misled. Pray for them. Mercy, oh God. Mercy. We pray for the church in Zaria. Our territory. Our Jerusalem. We pray. Let there be authentic power. Upon our pulpit, oh God. Let God's people not be deceived anymore. Through dreams. Angelic encounters. Reveal yourself to these men, oh God. That they may repent and turn away from every walk of unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Let me just add one more prayer point. Sorry, I know we're out of time. There are free buses. You are going to pray for yourself. That you will not start now. See, let me tell you something. Listen. Many of you have not experienced fame. Hear me. Many of you do not know what honor looks like. You don't know what it means to walk and become the subject of discussion. Job said, when I walk, the elders bowed their head when they saw me. The young men talked about me. When my rose was with butter, there is a way God will honor you that if you are not careful, you can shift away. Lift your voice and cry. Say, Lord, help me. Help me, oh God. Lift your voice and cry. There are many of you, you've not even seen anything in your campuses, your little fellowships. You're already bragging and making noise. Say, Lord, help me tonight in Koinonia. 
that Jesus alone will be lifted. Not ENI, not Koinonia, not your pastor's name, not your ministry. If I be lifted. Lord, grant me a humble heart. Take away pride. Take away vain glory. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to start a wrong movement. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So evangelize like never before. Run away from pride. Run away from it. Let believers know you are genuine. Let believers know you are real. The things you used to do, you can't do them again. Your Christian experience must translate into something that the world can relate with. Hallelujah. I bless you with a deeper hunger for God. A deeper passion. Beyond your present experience. In the name of Jesus, let it be a well that no water can fill up. Let that hunger be a well that no water can fill up. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You must make a commitment to win souls. Hallelujah. I will put that soul winning spirit in all of us. I know that, see, we must take evangelism serious. Evangelism has gone out of the church of Christ. Many things is here now. Money, fame, apostle. God will give you those things. But we must restore the passion. When somebody comes to give testimony and they talk about born again, nobody says anything. They talk about a changed life. People trivialize it. But if you say you bought a new car, people stand up. I'd like you to pray in one minute. I know we're out of time. Say, Lord, if your heart beat is souls, I repent for trivializing it. Lift your voice and pray. My God, I pray that that fire for missions and evangelism will fall upon your people. Let Koinonia be known as a place of radical power evangelism. There are hundred level students scattered. Save them. I deliver you from fear. The fear of men. I deliver you from it. You will never walk in power until you have a heart for soul. Someone saved you. Someone preached to you. You must take the banner of soul winning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If souls do not come to the kingdom, let me tell you we are joking. Are you hearing me? If souls do not come to the kingdom, we can do our jamboree but I tell you, we have no notice in heaven. Thank God for the cars. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for falling down. But how many people can say, I came to know the Lord Jesus? How many drunkards can you bring to Koinonia? That someone will say, I was a drunkard. You know your classmates. Some of them are not born again. You are, you are not doing anything about it. You are there bragging that you are walking in power. You will never see miracles until you truly need souls. If you are not ready for soul winning, you don't need the miraculous. Whether you are a singer, whatever you are, you must make up your mind to begin to talk to people about the Lord Jesus. What if they get angry with me? Jesus hung naked on the cross. What will you not give up for him? The programs on campus, listen to me. I know there are many campus presidents. Make sure your programs this session are evangelistic in nature. We are tired of jamborees around. Make sure whatever it is that you do, let there be an ardent passion for souls. You must give people an opportunity to be born again. Say I'm a soul winner. Don't just get them born again and throw them. Follow them up. Help them to be strengthened. 
That way, you can know you are doing ministry. Not when you have PA and PA and this and you have... This, all this fear about our lives, fear about the future, fear about ministry, will I be rich? Will I marry? Will I have children? How many? Will my pregnancy stay? Will I die? Will a plane crash? Will a car jam me? All those things are results. Hear me. Will crowds come for my meeting? What if they get angry one day and don't like me again? Those thoughts are a product of a lack of knowledge about how mighty God is. I sing that song again. Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior. talk like this I, I know what some of you are thinking when you hear people talk like this you just say they are lucky I mean you have food to eat you have this thing they kept in front as though we were born like that <laughs> let me tell you something very few people in this life even historically were ever born with any privilege it takes an understanding I remember clearly when the Lord would speak to me in the secret no results no results but i believed him i remember when he told me he would anoint me and he would do great things i remember when he began to give the blueprint of e and i the blueprint of i remember those little instructions he gave on our way to crusade grounds hoping the world will work let me tell you something Ejimi. come come let me tease this guy small i love him he's my friend you see when we started out let me tell you something that time it wasn't like a crowd like this there were few people now I remember clearly I told them that when we went to the crusade ground we we're going to meet all kinds of people blind sick and all of that and I think he thought we we're joking and we had already planned that that time everybody was a minister it wasn't like you are in welfare you don't mm -mm. So when it was time to pray, you would just choose at random. You didn't have the privilege to know what was wrong until you stood in front of the person. Are we together now? And I remember very clearly, Ejimi then and Jakes. When I started saying all those things, Ejimi got troubled one time and he said, come on, let's, let's really find out. Are we going to, how, you know, trying to find out, I hope this anointing works. I hope those devils are going to be cast out. I remember... I hope you can remember. I remember one of the, the first day of the crusade. Two of our ladies, they now went to meet a woman. You remember the story? They went to meet a woman who was deaf and dumb. You know, they came with all the zeal, had received impartation. We had fasted our lives. I mean, we're looking like skeletons. And then the ladies now laid hands, you know, oh God, you spoke to Joshua Selman. And I'm telling you, that woman was just looking like this. No miracle no healing it was so embarrassing the ladies tried how many of you know that when you try you go around and go around nothing happens i remember one person a jimmy i think it was a jimmy that wanted to minister to a young boy and the boy looked at him and said can you see that tree sir he said we have tied people on it he said he can go and call what did he say he wants to go to the market and call the other people that tied so much. yes a very small child i remember the shock on a jimmy's face listen we didn't look like much then but we believed him the third day of the crusade the deaf and dumb woman spoke her ears open remember the first day nothing happened it was so embarrassing 
so embarrassing for the ladies they came and met me i said don't worry try it do it again your faith and then on the third day i just got angry i said okay you people have tried look this woman let's deal with this thing before these villagers kill us here see you know why i'm telling you this and why i called him it was faith i remember while we were preparing for the crusade he took his computer his personal computer he was the only one who had a computer then not a laptop a big screen computer he took everything and put it on sale to carry all the money and supply for the crusade these are hidden stories that you may never never know never knew i dedicated my scholarship 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent for the crusade sacrifices why because we knew god was mighty at a point we didn't have the money to pay where we lodged people as at that morning we were in trouble so we went to greet the king when we went to greet the king we exchanged pleasantries greeted him in the palace and then prayed for him we had a session with the pastors a pastor's conference it was a wonderful time people sowed some seeds plus the seed the king sent that was how we gathered the money listen there was no assurance no uncle no auntie no partner but god everybody shout but god thank you jimmy i love you god bless you but god when you bring god into the equation the calculation changes you have to know that i had fainted the bible says but god but god the psalmist said if the lord had not been our help now may israel say if the lord had not been our help listen every other thing should happen to you but god i'm prophesying to somebody the shame should come but god the interceptor every other thing should come but god the trouble should come but god when you add god to the equation the calculation changes god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent one of the mysteries that are responsible for fearsome results responsible for the strange breakthrough in the lives of men is absolute trust in god based on an understanding of who he is he says be strong in the lord and in the power of his might the revelation that he is mighty be strong let your stability be upon that i know i do not have the rent but god is faithful i don't know how it will happen but one thing i know is this god will help me he said i will lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help he says my help cometh from the lord the maker of heaven and earth apostle my father is dead i understand but god is still alive apostle my mother is dead my sisters have vowed that because i became a christian no sponsor apostle there is there is no helper no there is a helper He's the one who can help men. Look, when God decides to come into your life and help you, you will be scared at the result. There is something called the help of men. We are products. Ebenezer, thus far, has the Lord helped. It says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. There are many people who remove God out of the equation of their lives. So they look at you and say but i'm more intelligent than you why is your life making progress because i i kept i didn't add god i put him in front of me there are many arrogant people believing they they do every calculation by themselves then they say god where are you just come and join the queue some of us have learned we put god in front and we foolishly follow foolishly follow if he moves this way wherever we are we turn back and say god let's keep going he guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake he said yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death what will happen i shall fear no evil why not because i'm masculine for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff 
they comfort me. Then he says, thou preparest a table for me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Do you trust God? Do you believe God? is a little teaching but let me tell you something your life will be challenged by circumstances that will require your faith in God no matter how hard working you are a day will come the only person you can cry to I want you to glue this understanding hold his hands and never let him go. You're all I want. You're everything, Lord. You're all I have ever needed. You're all I want. Help me. Wait! Is his presence and his word his presence and his word men will fail you not may fail will fail prepare for it the best and the most reliable of all of us will still fail brothers and sisters please listen to me so that you stop yourself from receiving heart shattering heartbreak I don't trust men no I don't I receive of their ministry but only as accredited by God. I have pledged my life that anything God cannot give me, let no man claim he can give me. No, sir. No, sir. If God cannot lift this ministry, I will be a liar together with any other person who joins me to believe. No. He said, which of you by worrying can add one cubit? One cubit. One strand of hair. Is God blessing us? Everybody say, God is almighty. God is almighty. In, my life. in my life. Say it again. God is almighty, is almighty. In, my in my life. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I permit you to show your might. I'm tired of doubting you. I'm restraining your hand. I'm restraining your hand. Ah, there is more that you can do. There is more. There is more that you can do. I have restrained your hand through my unbelief. They limited God by saying, Can God, can God, can God bless me in Zaria? Can He bless me in Zaria? Where are the helpers? No. The God I serve is dependable. Dependable, dependable, hey, dependable God. Dependable, dependable God. The reliable God. Reliable God. Reliable God. Reliable, reliable God. Unchangeable.
nation. You are the joy of the whole world. sit down but in one minute I want you to look at the mountain that has threatened God in your life and I want you to prophesy say my God can handle you lift your voice and pray say it my God can handle you I may not have what it takes but my God can handle you no my God can handle you pray my God can handle you the shame and reproach. I may not be able to do anything about it, but my God can handle you. The stagnation and delay, the lack of results and lack of progress, my God can handle you. I do not fear. My God can handle you. You know that song, Sam? In, in this place. place. Sing that song for us. Let your power flow. In this place. I pray for signs and wonder. In this place. Let your healing flow. In this place. Psalms 147 verse 5 quickly I'm shaking unbelief in your life shaking unbelief in your life God is a mighty God he's the almighty not an almighty the almighty no options no one above him no one above him thank you Sam he says great is our Lord and of great what power then he says his understanding this is the mystery behind his power his understanding is infinite now when you meet such a man never leave him his understanding is infinite great is our lord and of great power he says his understanding his comprehension is infinite I trust him. I believe him. You know, we when Ogun we came in, um, left this morning, and um, while I just passed the whole Lagos about an expressway down, I kept seeing different camps, prayer camps belonging to different ministries, and I thought for a while. One day, all of them were in their rooms, and God came to them and said, "I will make you great. Do you believe me?" And they were stupid enough to say yes some could not speak english but they said yes mm. had no connection some no education but they said yes it is when the results happen people start admiring you no the mission is follow me 
if you can have that rugged faith to follow him you will return with a testimony please i want you to bond this every time challenges overwhelm you every time you come to a point where you don't know what to do meditate on the might the might of god i like angel michael when they started fighting with lucifer over the body of moses this is what he said he said i will not bring any railing accusation against you but this is my verdict the lord i invoke a power greater than me the lord rebuke you you've been trying to fight many battles on your own it will soon kill you there are some battles that will eat you up on your own there are many young men trying to fight the battle of finances by themselves i'm brilliant i'm not daft you will soon die the the visit the reality of the economy will swallow you up you better humble yourself and say lord lead me i'm not ashamed to declare that i do not know if you don't lead me the bible says trust in the lord with all your heart proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 6 says and lean not on your own understanding right it says in all your ways verse 6 now acknowledge him and he will make straight your path seven says be not wise in your own eyes he says fear the lord and turn away depart all this do you know why many people don't trust god this macho man bold face thing that they want to do to life listen it's good to be bold but we make our boast in the lord when you remove him out of the question you are boasting and you must defend yourself indeed we make our boast all day long the psalmist says your confidence in life is not just because of your intellectual capacity your confidence in life is not just because you think you went to school go and find out how many graduates are moving around as if they are holding a tissue paper your confidence in life is not because you think you can speak english your confidence is not because you think you look good <sighs> there is one mighty strong strong mighty you threaten me he will answer you mm. you will hear my voice in that equation he will echo and when god speaks everything if you speak to me it's only me that will respond to you but when god speaks everything will answer everything please tap into this understanding I'm giving you spiritual intelligence don't ever say they are basic leave God out of your life and watch the way the enemy will eat you leave the understanding of the almightiness of God and show me how you will ever build a house show me how you will ever build a ministry show me how you will ever build a business it will it will so shock you take God away that is a a, a mountain that cannot be surmounted but bring him into the equation and he will cause it to tremble before you now the thing is men don't see him they see only you so they think you are the one doing it alone it's up to you to be smart enough to keep his presence by being an usher and pointing men back to him and say look i know you saw only one person walking but we are two and actually i'm only the second of the two not the first there is one in front of me i am a product of his wisdom i am a product of his leadership there is this treasure, he says, in earthen vessels, that the excellency of power might be of God, not of the vessel. Please repent from this unnecessary, vain confidence in yourself. I will do this. I am smart. The way I'm anointed, it's impossible for me to not have an anointed ministry. You are joking. Go and find out how many people see Jesus almost every day and don't have up to 10 people in their church. It's not because they are going to hell. If it does not give you these keys. It says a man can receive nothing except it is given. If it is not given to you, you can't have it. It's impossible. What an awesome God you are. You're an awesome, awesome God. What an awesome God you are You're an awesome Number three 
ready the third key man will always have a role to play man will always have a role to play in fulfilling God's word in his life man will always have a role to play I'm giving you spiritual intelligence so you don't waste your time asking why things are not happening man will always have a role to play someone is being delivered already from this statement your role is not taking the place of prophecy but it controls manifestation between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass you have a role Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 man will always always the love of God is unconditional but his blessings are conditional the love of God is unconditional but his blessings are conditional Here's what it says, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt, uh -huh, listen, diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, pay attention. Then, number two, to do all his commandments which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will do what? Set thee on high above all nations of the earth, verse two, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee what's the condition if thou shall hearken verse 2 just stop there if thou shall hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God he didn't say if God speaks he will set you on top as powerful as his voice is it requires a partnership are we together how many believers sit down there is a very sad statement that is used especially around the north that's to mean it was so prepared by god no i believe in the sovereignty of god there are things that are written there is how god can veto in a man's life but it is not in his character to veto over everything are we together so if i'm poor is the will of god if the ministry refuses to grow is the will of god no 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 the will of god is not hidden he has made known unto us the mystery of his will it's clear i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 11 thoughts of peace and not of evil not of evil not of evil not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end that means if my life is not bringing me a future an unexpected end I know that something is wrong I can't sit down stupidly say no this this has to be God no 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 I know his ways it's not a mystery I know there are challenges I know there is a fullness of affliction I know there are seasons but I also know that the times are in the hands of God he said until the word of the Lord came to him the word of the Lord tried him right but when that word came he prevailed over it in the dealings of God with man you don't suffer forever no sir understand the ways of God so that you don't sit down giving God thanks over things you should be rebuking hallelujah if the membership of koinonia begins to reduce I won't sit down and say it's the will of God he's driving wrong people that's nonsense we know that there is a spirit destroying men because it is the will of God that all men might be saved all men there's no such thing as the crowd does not matter it does the ministry of the kingdom is a ministry of multitudes when you understand your partnership you will know what is demonic you will know what is a process you will know what to give thanks for and what to cast and bind there are too many believers who just sit down and say whatever will be will be unfortunately it's what you don't like that will be are we together everybody hates me 
they are not nice to me say well maybe that's how my life is it will continue like that you have not sat down to say could there be the manifestation of an evil spirit in my life that is bringing this rain of bad luck i'm such a nice personality but why is it that people cannot help me when you begin to probe and look at things then the lord will show you your own role and say this is what you have neglected this do and you will see the hand of god everyone say i have a role say it loud i have a role to play in the fulfillment of god's word over my life and destiny say it again i have a role to play in the fulfillment of god's word over my life and destiny say it one last time i always have a role to play in the fulfillment of god's word over my life and destiny never allow anybody listen never allow anybody indoctrinate you into believing you will sit down and cross your leg and things will happen no sir even science refuses that even science refuses that nothing moves by itself right yeah the first law of mechanics science people a body remains in a state of uniform motion or a static state till an external force acts upon it otherwise meaning if i leave this here and there is no force acting it will remain there forever your destiny is like this object it will remain in one place the day God wants to change, I know my God, he will arise. You know your God, but he will not arise. You provoke his hand to arise for you. God will deliver me. You people should just keep watching. No, there is what you must do. Good master, what shall I do to be saved? That's why the man was rich. What shall I do? He knew he had a role to play. Not all God save me. That's what the other guy said on the cross. We are here. It's true. We are thieves. But what did you even say? And Jesus looked at him. The other one said, look, we are seen as Lord. We take responsibility. Say you, you will be with me this day in paradise. The other guy still on the cross as a thief and a criminal was not repentant. I'm somebody who is obsessed with a sense of responsibility. I, I detest irresponsibility of any kind, especially spiritual irresponsibility if my life will rise is up to god in partnership with my cooperation still on this point i want you to write this down are you getting blessed tonight just listen to what i'm telling you and you'll be surprised to see how your life will change write this down still on that point three your part will have to be based on knowledge and understanding your part will have to be based on knowledge and understanding in as much as it is important to take action that action must be based on knowledge and understanding not emotions not suggestions not guessing you see the thing about god is he clarifies what role you have to play moses stretch forth your rod it is a moses just do whatever you want to do. I'm just there. No. Stretch forth your rod. Jericho. Joshua. Tell the people to go around Jericho. Specific instruction. Once. Every one of the six days. And on the seventh day, they go seven times. After that, together with the priest, they raise a shout. Specific rule. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. We we'll look at two scriptures. So many people are attempting to cooperate with God, but they are doing it in ignorance. Now, when you, when you walk in ignorance, you alienate yourself from the possibilities that are, con that are contained in God. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Let's look at it. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Let's turn it from here for time's sake. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7. It says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom 
Then he says, and with all thy getting, do what? Get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Wisdom tells you to cook. Understanding tells you how to combine the ingredients. Wisdom tells you you have a great destiny. Understanding tells you the path to take. That's why he says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. There are similar roles, but they are not the same. A light to your path. Direction. A lamp to your feet. Guidance. A light to your path. Direction. Listen, if you come and you're looking for direction, I'll tell you, okay, go left. You're going to see two roads. Follow the left one. Turn. That's direction. But when I tell you, let's walk together and we get to a place, I say, okay, move with me. That's guidance. The word of God both guides and directs. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So God shows you where to go and guides you on how to go there. Make sure that you understand what to do before you start doing it. Don't just say, wow, this tight. Let, okay. Since prosperity is tied to tithing and all of that, let me just tie it. You may be taking the action, but is it based on knowledge and understanding? You can frown your face and come and squeeze an envelope and stand as if you are going to stone God with money and drop it in the offering basket as though you are bribing a man and go back and find out that your heaven still remain closed. Because it is not the substance, it is the understanding. The insight is what gives life to the action. Are you seeing that now? Yeah. So you are praying for the sick and you are saying in the name of Jesus be healed. But you think he's just about speaking. So you are saying be healed, be healed, be healed. And the person is not being healed. You are still mentioning the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be anointed. The power of God will touch people right now. Everybody, you ask them to shout everything. I receive, shout Jesus, shout fire, shout water, shout. And everybody is just looking at you like a rock. I tell you, you are such a bunch of unbelievers here. You are, you are trying to insult the grace of God on my life. Then you start making reference to meetings. That's what people do when they don't have result. Is it not you that came in 1991? Remember that meeting? Bible says Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Don't bring Jesus of yesterday for us. We want to see the Jesus of today. Alive and strong. But that's what happens to people. Let your action be based on knowledge. Knowledge. Okay, what is the revelation behind tithing? Why does tithing open the heavens? Wow. Tithing is my spiritual circumcision. Tithing is my proof of obedience. Tithing is not a proof of love. Giving is a proof of love. Tithing is a proof of obedience. Tithing does not mean you love God. Tithing just means you are obedient. Because an exact figure was given to you. So I begin to study it. I see those who gave their tithe and the results that followed. And then light breaks out. And now I package my tithe with understanding. So I come and while I'm singing, I'm in the worship team and I'm trusting that every time I lift up my voice, people get blessed. I know that it's not just a nice voice and beautiful melodies. I go and begin to study. What is it about music and worship? And I begin to find out, ah, this is how it works. Now, on the strength of that understanding, when I lift a song, I'm lifting that song from an understanding. That understanding will allow a dimension of the grace of God to flow through that song. And you find out that people become a reflection of your understanding. Never do things because people are doing it. Spend time to seek knowledge and understanding. Then you take an enlightened step. Take an enlightened step. Everybody is doing business to prosper. You too, you go and do it. No. What is the purpose of it? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible talks about those who are alienated. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Through ignorance. Through ignorance. Are we together? Yeah. There are people who 
although they are supposed to be walking in certain realities they exempted themselves through ignorance being alienated from the life of God and the Bible says through ignorance I am always passionate about a revelation of the areas where I do not know I'm not too proud to learn I always want to know what am I doing wrongly what when I find knowledge that is relevant to me I jump at it with all my heart I know you have been taking action but is it based on insight is it based on revelation you saw people anointing themselves you went to go and buy Goya oil and you brought it and all of a sudden you opened a bottle and drank small rub small on your head rub small on your hand went to sleep and his spirit sat on you 10 minutes later and he said my god with this oil yes with the oil you carried your bible and put it under your bed and while you slept you had the worst dream even the day you slept watching a film you had a good dream but now you put your bible because it's not in actions revelation there are too many people who don't pay attention to revelation revelation Ephesians 1 17 Paul speaking says for this cause I Paul bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light that you may know come into a comprehension come into an understanding of a reality it is important for us to know I like it to say in the name of Jesus Lord take away ignorance from my life say it again take away ignorance you know let me tell you something the little understanding that God has given me about certain kingdom realities the mysteries of the kingdom I watch how people break these laws every day and want to succeed and want to do well I watch pastors break the laws that bring success in ministry I watch business people break the laws that bring success in business I watch leaders break the laws that bring uncommon results I watch people who want the anointing break almost every law that brings it you see enlightenment is very powerful because when you are moving in darkness you don't even know and so you keep trying this is not working but I fasted 30 days I thought at the end of 30 days an angel will appear to me and say from this day I give you a mantle receive it you collect it and, and nothing happens and yet you see how effortless certain people move in the grace and the power of God as though God owes them his presence and power you've got to find out it's not just in saying the power of God is moving it's not just in saying this and that and that no as I passed Lagos about an expressway today, I saw the predictability of the results of the people. You know, most of those fathers of faith came from the same background. The same background. The Apostolic Church, Aladura, CAC, that background. Regardless of what they have now. So certain foundational things were functional, regardless of what the ministry is. Crowds, space they caught a revelation of space they don't buy small things they buy kilometers not plots and expand it i've had the privilege to see photos of some of these ministries in some nations that are racist nations yet they gave them land it's a grace now they may not have as much revelation as you do but sadly they have more results which do you prefer the end of everything brothers and sisters is results hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit not that you learn about plants that you bear much fruit you can learn all you can about plants but if you cannot bear fruit you are not glorifying the father your action must be based on light and that means you must contend for light let me tell you how I study I write out the areas of my life where I have seen some measure of result and I celebrate and thank God 
then I write out the areas in my life where I'm trusting God for results or greater results and then I begin to study from the Word of God and secondly from the life of those who have commendably produced results in that area that's how you get results that's how you get results I'm not going to study somebody who is not working in the anointing if I want to work in the anointing. I will love the person. I will respect the part, the fact that he is part of the body. But he has nothing to teach me about the anointing. It's not working in his life. So I will find somebody who represents the hand of God to the degree to which I desire. And humbly study to the degree to which I desire. There may be many of them, but I must find the one that reflects my expectation. Then I study follow them the bible says who through faith and patience obtain not are obtaining they have obtained the promise hallelujah run away from ignorance run away from it start acting blindly don't just act emotionally the moment you panic blood of jesus holy ghost fire honestly holy ghost fire hey, these demons you are hearing holy ghost you don't know what the fire of the holy ghost does you don't even know whether it exists you don't even know whether the blood of jesus is there and what it should have so you are just praying holy ghost fire holy ghost fire blood of jesus it will never i, I refuse to believe it then you start crying even you you know you didn't believe what you said because at the end you just stop stop praying and say god is this how you leave me May people of confidence arise who know you see when you are walking by light you will not stop regardless of the result because you know the result will show it's like driving right when you are driving somewhere you don't get tired after five minutes and say we've not reached let me park this car you keep moving why because you know you will get there when people start practicing certain things and stop it is because they don't have a revelation that that is the key for every door there is a key you have a bunch of keys in your hands the bible calls them the keys of the kingdom you have to painstakingly find out which one opens which door i can have a bunch of keys in my hands that does not mean the doors will open how many of you have different doors in your homes that have different keys you can see one small and then another one big the keys don't replace themselves you have to know which one there are certain padlocks you open them in a very interesting way there are others you can close your eyes and just chuck it and turn and it opens all in the same house so there are things you can just come and effortlessly solve but there are others you have to look at it with the eyes of the spirit ah this is what i do this is what i do and i get results in the name of jesus christ i pray for you may the days of shadow boxing come to an end in your life Efforts that are not done out of knowledge, efforts that are not done out of, out of accuracy, you will begin to be circumspect and every action of yours will start producing strange results in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take two more and then we'll pray. Is God speaking to you? Thank you, Jesus. Number what? Number four, evil still exists. Write it down. Evil, the reality of darkness, the depravity, the existence of wickedness, the existence of darkness is a revelation that you must comprehend if you want to walk in victory, walk in triumph, and have spiritual intelligence listen it is not only weakness it is foolishness to ignore the presence of evil evil still exists first john chapter 5 verse 19 let's turn there write it down and turn there. first john 5 19 Jesus, thank you. Can you play the guitar too for me, Binga? Just follow him and play. God wants to do something in this place. First John 5 19.
it says and we know that we are of God and then it says apologies for the projection issues I'll just read from here you listen to me carefully and we know that we are of God then it says and the whole world lieth it didn't say receives visitation the world is lying like you say this pulpit is lying on a, a rug a carpet then it says the whole world lieth where in wickedness listen I want to give you spiritual intelligence the condition to be a victim of any attack from the devil is that you are born not that you do anything wrong or right the moment you find yourself on this side of God's kingdom immediately there is a contention every human being on earth is a potential battle axe Satan will not wait till you become one he starts attacking you from birth he knows that everyone born of a woman carries the potential to be used by God are we together apostle what have i done who did i offend have you heard that that culture driven terminology God, this one that demons are against me nothing works in my life i didn't offend anybody you don't have to there is a story that predates your existence listen to the teaching pulling down strongholds and a number of other teachings warfare series i teach there very extensively on the reality of wickedness many of us trivialize it until it attacks you no the bible says woe to them who are at ease in zion scripture clearly tells us that this world living is a warfare living is a warfare i think it's dr paul Enche who says that the world is a battlefield not a playing ground it's a real battlefield just start getting blessed and watch people hate you for doing nothing you are trying to show you have money who did you offend nobody lie down and sleep and let someone not be able to sleep he wakes up and is angry why are you sleeping this is the world we live in you have a neighbor who looks at you and sees you dancing giving glory to God and he says all these arrogant people I will deal with you that begins attacks in your life please listen to me I'm sharing with, I'm giving you spiritual intelligence I have factored in my life that every day of my life until Jesus comes somebody somewhere hates me enough to want to see me dead somebody somewhere hates me enough to go so only God knows how many people are in a herbal shrine now calling my name while I'm sleeping only God knows how many people are saying let him have a plane crash this year let him have a car accident this year so that all the mouth is making about the word of God so that people will be discouraged the problem is never the enemies the problem is you but to ignore their presence is a joke the psalmist listen Judas one who was close to Jesus used a kiss a kiss is supposed to be a good thing a sign of love but to someone it was a sign destroy him brothers and sisters hear me i don't mean to insult your civilization but i'm sorry to inform you that witchcraft is real say it after me witchcraft is in everyone's village here everyone is in the city is in zaria somebody somewhere is looking for blood and they are hoping that your own will be the one they are finding <laughs> you better grow up fast enough to believe what i'm telling you the whole world lieth in wickedness a man goes out in the morning and returns back with a sack letter that was the happiest day of his life but he returned back ask joe Job was minding his business and consultations were happening in the heavenlies and all of a sudden everything began to fail in his life brothers and sisters I can look at a life and know that this life is under attack I have seen marriages under attack 
all of a sudden love dries up between the husband and wife for no reason the man is angry with the wife you ask him many times i counsel them i say sir what exactly did your wife do he said apostle i can't tell you this is exactly what she has done but i'm tired of this woman i have to look for another one then you know that hell is breaking loose madam why do you hate this man i'm tired i've not enjoyed my marriage from the day we've been married for 17 years not one day of joy madam you didn't laugh on your wedding day not one day of joy not one day of joy <laughs> Yet you see videos of happy moments when they dance together. Not one day of joy. And she's planning to leave that guy. By Jesus, for sure. A man prays for the arrival of a child. And have you seen people who look at their children and regret that they were married? Not because the child did anything. From the day this child came, our finance doesn't stay again. What sort of a child is this? I don't need a word of knowledge to know that your life is under attack. All I need to know is, did you say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you mean business about your destiny? Then your life is a project for darkness. How can we make the word of God fail in Pastor Alpha's life? How can we make promise not become that thing? How can we frustrate the purposes of God upon Benga's life? That's the devil for you. Let me tell you something with Satan. He's a patient fellow. Don't take his patience as foolishness. He can be patient and wait for 20 years until the ministry expands enough for you to not pray again. Then he comes just like he said he would and destroy your life. Are we together? There are many of us right now. I know your life is under attack by your prayer life. I see it. You don't need a word of knowledge. I know your life is under attack by the bitterness. Things you never would conceive before are now at work in you. I see the anger and the resentment. You hate everybody for no cause. It's not you. Peter, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. I look at a man and know his life is under attack. All doors of finance is closed. Then four children become sick in one day. He's coming. The thief cometh not but to steal. You always see his signature. When he comes, he leaves the traces. A family that were once happy, all of a sudden, from nowhere, you will see the lady will just come with one kind of trouble somewhere the guy will come with one kind of trouble somewhere the guy will start smoking he will come and speak to his father and say from today i'm a man you talk to me i slap you just when he's doing that they sack him from work just when he's doing that something happens his car packs out brothers and sisters it is not a test it is oppression hallelujah all of a sudden, mysteriously, people start dying within a region. Have you seen that happen? Just like in three weeks or one month, men, fathers of people just go away. Mothers of people just go away. Brothers and sisters just go away. Just like that. Five people lose their jobs within two weeks in your house. Don't tell me it's not an attack. Someone promises you I will give you a job even says complete everything you travel around the last stage someone just wants to sign and say what did you say your name is again femi me i said i will help you call this person for me did i say this guy was part of them you say sir we even drank minerals that day say look i can't remember drinking any minerals leave this place i have seen witchcraft life in the lives of people I have seen families under attack no one rises you rise beyond certain limits the devil will not stop you but one day something happens and it crashes you there are ministries within certain regions that don't reach three years zaria is one of those places the lifespan of any ministerial impact in this city 
is three years after three years a scandal must arise or something must arise and destroy you if you survive three years you are truly anointed you see it happen a musician comes into the city they are inviting him to every church they exhaust your grace in two months and dump you they are looking for the next person there is such evil There are men of God like that. There are seasons where they are relevant. For one year, two years, they are the talk of the town. Almost every church invites them. After that, you see them walk upon the street. There are names in this nation and around the world. I cannot even begin to mention. People who were inspirations. When you mention them, they represented certain dimensions. Now they are as silent as a dead body. Wickedness is real evil is real one of us here showed me the picture of his father i think it was last week and i saw the man's legs like half of the leg you could see the bones sorry for painting a graphic picture no flesh it had eaten what happened to the man he was sleeping you know went to bed at night and all of a sudden someone fired an arrow to the leg he saw it and woke up just a slight pain a slight pain started eating up when I saw the picture, it was irritating. I said, this is your father's leg? Just imagine dividing my leg by half. Imagine the toes, knees. You are seeing the bones. That's somebody's leg alive today. HIV people who receive their HIV not by a bad living, but from dreams. Are you aware do you know when the enemy rises against you? Do you have the discernment to know? Or you just sit down and say, we are all like that. It's just Nigeria. You know, I've shared with you a, a story. I'll, I'll, I'll share it here. One time I was praying. I think I was in a fast and then I was praying. And I've shared it here a number of times. My, the, the ceiling just disappeared like disappeared like that and all of a sudden i saw a big creature big like as tall as this from here up the eyes alone were like the head like my head imagine two of my head that's the eyes and then the tail was like a snake imagine another animal joined to another animal the tail had life of itself it could detach and live its life independently you know how you caught a worm and then the parts are, are, are acting that's how it was and then he looked at me with fierce anger and this is what he told me he said so you think you can bring the people of god into abundance that was a conversation red fiery eyes and after that the vision disappeared you think the devil is happy every time you are being transported you think the devil is happy every time you are being delivered you think the devil is happy every time you are being saved being healed you think the devil is happy with this information you are receiving that your life is being changed you think the devil is happy that now you have been taught not to cry at challenges in times of famine you should dance and rejoice you think satan is happy with that mystery so imagine how much he would try to come against me let's do something to this man imagine how he would try to come against koinonia let's do something against koinonia who is like him the lion and the lamb seated on the throne mountains bow down every ocean roll to the lord of lords When you find out that there is a pattern of pain and tragedy i want you to know that hell is about to break its bank over you and that is the time to arise before the throne there is the cross 
and you must know how to fight your way to victory this is where spiritual laziness has cheated many of us this is where the ministry of prayer has been absent in our lives the ministry of engaging the world for victory too much carelessness and people never rise they die at the cross there they die in the grave and there is no resurrection for them hallelujah when everything in your life goes haywire please hear me i understand that here and there one aspect of your life you may be trusting god but when every area of your life is zero if you have been finding out whether it's the devil i answer your prayer now yes he is yes he is i know his signature everything cannot go wrong at once something is wrong somewhere and so it is important you acknowledge it and then you lock your door and find out what is the mystery of deliverance not what is the mystery of prosperity what why am i not getting a job no job no money no favor no open doors no anointing no breakthrough no helpers you are under attack don't wait until it kills you you finish treating yourself now two weeks later it comes back i guarantee you you are under attack the moment stomach pain is getting healed your eye starts as you are taking the last drug for eye your ear starts all of a sudden you hit your leg you're on your way going to your room that little hit you for two weeks there is no bomb that cures it that was not a stone that was more than a stone I remember one day I was praying and I was praying for someone a particular person in this ministry and then when I was praying the Lord led me to pray for that person and immediately I was praying you know how you blow somebody on your back physically like I stand behind you and blow that was what I felt physically when I started praying for the person do you know sincerely speaking I had to kneel down and lay my hands the pain was too much and I knew that person's life was under attack ah! I said my God you have to arise and help this one I laid hands there no praise and worship let me tell you this there are prayers that prevail there are different kinds of tongues there are tongues for warfare it's not the tongues for just edifying your spirit man you do you know it will change believe me it's because you don't pray that's why you will never get there just speak anything and even you you know it didn't rise the day you lock your door i'm telling you this i'm telling you this you lock your door and say i'm not going out until there is a change i'm blasting tongues the spirit of god you will feel your tongues changing you will know this is warfare prayer you may not know what you are saying your mind is not fruitful but at a point your spirit the anger of your situation is added to your prayer you are not laughing praying nonsense you are thinking of who is calling no you are praying because you know that you are breaking through and at a point joy mm -hmm, one of the signs of the manifestation of the kingdom joy comes to you and for reasons you cannot explain you know that victory has been wrought peace comes to you he gives you a sign i tell you when you get that sign start dancing no power hear me this is how i live my life when i pray listen let me teach you some hold on please when i pray i don't stop until that joy comes i don't do all this i'm praying for 30 minutes one hour if it is in five minutes the joy comes that's when i stop pray you hold the universe you hold every one of us listen there are people here the moment a man appears in your life those spirits arise the lifespan of that relationship it will not pass two months no matter how vicious you are you thought it was just because you were bad no the best people in your family have gone through the same thing please listen to what i'm telling you i'm giving you keys that will give you victory evil is real hear me 
if you see crowds like this gathered inside and outside by the grace of God brothers and sisters victory was commanded in the realm of the spirit it didn't just happen you sit down there and allow Satan to keep blackmailing what you represent every time you want to bless people people say don't trust Benga I'm still suspecting him don't you know there are spirits that plant deception you blast them out in prayer someone wants to marry you all of a sudden a stranger arises she does not know she's under the influence of a demon this lady did a and b and c last year no sir the moment he wants to bless you he wants to do business with you and a night before signing the contract what million somebody calls him and say who did i hear you are doing business with be careful you see that let me tell you there are spirits i told you life is spiritual you keep watching things happen in your life you will never rise beyond some levels there are some of you the moment you hold money finances everything will go haywire till it finishes when it finishes everything dies by itself it's an attack it's an attack there are times some of you have received calls from me even in the night you were sleeping and you just had me call you and i said where are you what are you doing oh apostle i mean this and that and that all right let's pray some of you have, have received calls i just call you I, sometimes i don't even know you you don't ask how i got your phone number i just call you and i say let's pray in the name of jesus a and b i see the numbers in dreams and the lord says call this person there is an attack over their family I just call you and off the phone you don't even know what happens some of you when the devil is about to buffet you the Lord uses my face in your dreams here he comes shows up I tell you if you see me in your dreams start dancing I'm not a herbalist believe me it's a mystery God used the voice of Eli to speak to Samuel God uses a grace you honor that represents a ranking that can solve your problem. So when he shows up, he shows up with his covenant of possibilities. It's not Joshua Selman. It's the lamb, the lamb himself, using the face of his servant. Listen, don't mind people who preach nonsense around. Say men of God use charm and herbalism to mind. Do it if it's easy to, to make charm. There are men of God I have prayed to command certain miracles in this ministry. And while I went to sleep, certain faces that I respect with respect to the dimension of the desire. Here they come, they walk up. Just like I come to you too. They come and sometimes they just speak a word. Sometimes they lay hands. When you get up, don't just laugh. You get up and receive it. This is where you miss it. You just get up and say, I saw a puzzle. And you are smiling. You miss your miracle. That's the time to dance. Shada Katai. It's done. It's over. It's done. It's over. It's done. It's over. Listen. Before this ministry entered a supernatural dimension of prosperity, I remember I was sitting. i have been praying. I'm practicing this principle but I knew that it, it's like there was a resistance a resistance and that night I prayed my heart out as I was sleeping all of a sudden I was preaching somewhere in Canaan land and Bishop Oyeriko was sitting down David Ipiome was sitting down close to him two men I respect their voice when it comes to the aspect of kingdom well territorial well and they were watching me just like supervising a student on project I was standing on the stage I could not stand very well it was shaking and afterwards I came and Oedeko asked me to empty everything in my pocket on his feet when I dropped it he said no there's still some more I put my hand I dropped everything and he laid hands on me somebody took me to a room I opened the room and I saw dollars I saw pounds I saw naira that was the beginning when that happened koinonia exploded like a charm there are mysteries you don't have spiritual intelligence you will never rise never rise some of you were this close to your breakthrough but you did not know what you saw you thought you had a dream only if you danced for 10 minutes that would have been the end of that problem but you did not know help those under the anointing you will January this year 
this year I was praying and all of a sudden I was caught up in a vision and then when I was caught up in a vision the second time I would see Papa Adeboe in an encounter not a dream not lying down to dream the first one it was a pastor's conference and then they were serving food in a tray and I was sitting and he pointed me he said come and then I came I saw pastors looking at me with anger and envy and he said sit down here let's eat I said I can never do this I've been trained to respect he said I said sit down and let's eat two of us sat on the ground and we were eating when I got up then January this one happened like 10 years ago January this year when God declared that it's a year of triumph I had that encounter again he finished doing something and then I came to him and I can't remember what happened and then he I, I have I have it written down and he looked at me and said okay I'm going to pray for you and he started praying and he was laying hands and he was singing a song in Yoruba quietly just laid hands on me and he was singing a song and then when he finished singing he says now I open up the gates you know how he's just talking I open up the gates of influence to you walk in it and he told me Baba I like you tell somebody in Yoruba go you can go I've opened the road brothers and sisters this is how this is what we call encounters you don't know it how many encounters have you had and you missed it because if it is not perfected in the realm of the spirit the same way you call somebody and shoot an arrow in the spirit and leave him quietly then in the physical two weeks he's still moving alive but he's dead he doesn't even know he's dead you see him and greet him how are you he said in two weeks is my birthday and you laugh at him you killed him two weeks ago yet he's still walking and one day he, anything can kill him because he's already dead anything that's the same way when you are blessed in the spirit anything can prosper you it's not about what you do it's about something that has entered you already you own the universe you own shed it in you something about the operation of witchcraft there are only three ways witchcraft operates I will be teaching you next week and then I will teach you the last point on how to command victory but someone has learned something tonight you have been wasting breakthroughs you finish koinonia and sleep you finish your prayer and sleep and things happen in the realm of the spirit you get up and you don't permit them to happen in this realm don't you know a man must speak for things to manifest You saw your marriage, but you got up and you were shy. You were embarrassed. And you just laughed and said, ah, don't mock me. I'm not talking of all these demonic things where you are moving around, no. Listen, it's not every encounter in the spirit that is demonic. Some things God is telling you, the season has come. Especially when it's, it is emphasized. Two is the number of emphasis. Three is a shorty, is a witness that God has decreed that it should happen. But it never happens. Never happens because there is no spiritual intelligence I don't waste opportunities in my life the greatest of my battles are fought in the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit that's what happens you've not commanded victory in the realm of the spirit you are pasting posters everywhere come for my meeting you are just wasting your money for nothing believe me the victory Miracle service is always finished before Friday. Koinonia is always finished before Friday. You don't come and finish Koinonia here. It's risky. Risky. You don't come for miracle service and stand on stage and say, it's time to be healed. Foolishness. That's not, it doesn't happen that way. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Then it was possible for him to be slain physically. If he were not slain in the realm of the spirit, he couldn't be, be, be saved physically. It always happens first in the realm of the spirit. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. I, I feel, I feel, I feel the air of some warfare prayers. We, I, I just sense in my spirit that we need to pray some warfare prayers.
Listen. In the next five minutes, I know our time is up. But in the next five minutes, I release my faith with you and I want us to pray. We are going to force doors to open. You are not praying to edify your spirit. No. Every pending breakthrough. It has been declared. It's my season of trial. I have seen it in dreams. The Lord has confirmed it. I should be blessed. I'm not asking. I know it. It is a season. Pray, pray, Koinonia. It's a season of encounter with the anointing. I cannot remain at this level of grace. There is a dimension. I have seen it. He gave me a witness. He gave me a witness. It's my season of breakthrough. It will not happen like before. Now I have intelligence. I will not waste the dreams. I will not waste the visions. I now understand. I now discern. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the beaters crown. You are the God. that should have happened stop asking whether it's the will of God you are going to pray and say Lord I allow them to manifest I partner with you now I've seen it in my dreams I saw it in the visions of God lift your voice and pray come on pray the visions of wealth I have seen it the visions of victory I call you for the visions of says withhold not good from thy brother when it is within thy power to do it say not to him come today come tomorrow God has it now did you hear what I said now I want you to lift your voice and say now breakthrough now breakthrough now breakthrough not next week no not next miracle
good service. Now favor. Now favor. Now breakthrough. Come on, Colonia. Now anointing. suggestion it's not a negotiation you have declared it's my year of trial i stop bad news lift your voice and stop it lift your voice and stop it tired of bad news tired of disappointment i stop it i stop it have respect oh god to the covenant i stop bad news Listen, never let anything to chance in your life. You will be so disappointed. Never let anything to chance. This is a word for someone. Never let anything to chance. If anything will happen, you will make it happen. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. you have never believed a prophetic word for any year believe it now believe it now thanks be to God who causes us always always to triumph I pray for you 
in the name of Jesus. Every vision you have seen that represent what God wants to happen in your life now and was hijacked by any power in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I command the expectation of God for you as revealed to you. I command it to manifest now. I command it to manifest now. I command it to manifest now. Hear me. Any human agent that partnered with darkness to hijack any aspect of your destiny. Let the fire of vengeance. You see, we've been praying vengeance here in the last two weeks. Just follow what God is doing. I command it that has stolen anything from your life, from your family, and brought you disaster. May the God of vengeance arise in judgment this night. May the God of vengeance arise in judgment this night. Whoever will not let you go must go for you. Whoever will not let your destiny go must go for you. I release vengeance, the fire of vengeance, the fire of vengeance, the fire of vengeance, the fire of vengeance. I decree and declare every power that closed your means of breakthrough in the name of Jesus I declare tonight let there be a warfare in the heavenlies we deploy angels we deploy angels the angels of God we declare are they not ministering spirits sent to minister to the heirs of salvation angels we release you war a good warfare release destinies release lives release favor release breakthrough in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. I decree and declare whoever is behind God's schedule for him, God planned that by now there are some realms of anointing you should have entered, some realms of breakthrough. Anyone behind schedule here, I want to push you by prophecy. So take a Pay attention. There is a grace for speed. I decree it. In the name of Jesus, upon everyone here, behind Shadul, in the name of Jesus, I command you, catch up now, catch up now, financially, catch up now, spiritually, catch up now. Anyone called Barry, anyone the devil has vowed that will not marry, anyone the devil has vowed to always have disappointment, I prophesy again, catch up now, catch up now. Listen, I don't know the chains that held your legs, but in the name of Jesus, by the fire that Elijah commanded from heaven, I decree and declare, may those chains break now. May those chains break now. May those chains break now. I pray for you, this night as you sleep, may my God show you a sign. So to God is a God of signs. God is a God of signs. My God, show your people signs. Signs of their victory. Signs of their breakthrough.
this is how to receive your portion anything less than this you are playing games this is how you receive what belongs to you the devil will not give it willingly no whoever is yet to have at least one solid testimony from january 2017 in spite of the fact that god has declared you clap for others hold on i'm not just saying maybe a casual there is no one here who has not seen the faithfulness of god but i'm saying there is nothing striking you cannot honestly say from january 1 till today 10th of march nothing constructive has happened in your life in the name of jesus except i be not sent of god in the name of Jesus, according to the election of God's mercy and grace, I prophesy to you, in seven days from today, in the name of the Lord God who called me, I command breakthrough, 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 return with testimonies, strange breakthrough. Help that lady. Strange breakthroughs. The doors must open. Hear me. Tomorrow, Koinonia will be six by his grace. We're not doing anything online. Leave all those things. Listen. But I want to place a prophecy over tomorrow. Listen. Every time people celebrate birthdays, they reenact what brought the birthday. Correct? If a king is celebrating birthday, he releases prisoners to prove he's a king. I want to place a prophetic word. Malatos Skadabari. I'm not speaking to you by faith. I'm speaking to you by a covenant. By a covenant. I'm not asking you whether you believe me or not. I'm just asking you to listen to me. The Lord that appeared to me the one who revealed to me that I saw a generation crying, I saw men languishing, the one who gave me his presence as a gift and brought the angel of his presence to walk with me, I invoke the covenant of my altar that post kata breast kata. I invoke the covenant of my altar oh God arise answer by the covenant I have with you Shake the nation. Change your people. In the name of Jesus, I place my covenant with God upon your life. Let there be strange results tomorrow. Strange results tomorrow. Strange results tomorrow. Strange results tomorrow. Results tomorrow. All over, hear me. All those connected to this grace, all those connected to this ministry, following online, I'm prophesying from 12 midnight tonight until 12 midnight tomorrow. I declare it a day of strange miracles, strange encounters, strange miracles, strange restoration, strange impartation. I declare an unusual release of angels over Zaria. I command it from 12 midnight today. I speak as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. 12 midnight this night. I command unusual angelic activities confirming the mandate, confirming the mantle. Listen. Listen. This is what I want you to do for me. Please listen. This is what I want you to do for me. From 12 midnight tonight, any time until 12 midnight tomorrow, I want you to pray. Take advantage of this unusual open heavens. I want you to ask whatever it is when you go back. Any long standing case, I want you, this is not by faith. Remember, this is a covenant. 
it is not I'm not just saying you are trying I'm not asking you whether you believe or not just do what I'm asking you to do use this 24 hours and watch something happen to your life that would never have happened I declare it as the word of the Lord I place the word of the Lord upon this prophecy it must happen to him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Listen, no sickness survives tomorrow in anyone's body you have never seen me hospitalized you have never seen three put on my hands you have never seen me fail to come for koinonia because i was down i declare no sickness dwells in anyone's body tomorrow hear me whoever will continue to hold your destiny and will not let you go. There is just about two hours. I declare, if they enter tomorrow, holding your destiny, I stand and I command the earth to take their body. I say this in the name of Jesus. Anyone who will not let you go, I say it again. If they cross 12 midnight, this night, I command the earth to take their bodies. your hands and give him thanks. We're out of time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Keep standing, everyone. We're out of time. But pay attention. This was worth it. I tell you, you will return with strange breakthroughs. Strange breakthroughs. Aside from those under the anointing, There are people here, Overflow 1 and Overflow across the road, listening to me online. What a joy to be part of this meeting. We are teaching on spiritual intelligence. Manipulating mysteries to produce results for people. You are here and you have never truly, listen, please listen, those outside. You have never truly, genuinely, genuinely, handed your life to Jesus you may have come for an altar call but you have never please don't let this night pass you by there is a window of opportunity in a strange way there are others you are saying man of God I want to rededicate my life before this 12 midnight I want as the angels of God distribute realities may I be found worthy by the blood so I want to pray for you wherever you are, please, please, before we celebrate the year of a man, the year of dominion through the voice of men, I pray for you that you will not harden your heart as you hear his voice. You want to rededicate your life, you want to give your heart to Jesus wherever you are. Please, I want you to run, we have a few minutes, inside and outside. Probably you came from far someone told you to come for this meeting and while you are listening you may even be a whole family and jesus is saying come out that's why i ask you to come here don't harden your voice remember it will always take god and a man keep coming god bless you god bless you there are people inside here follow them quickly don't wait until someone comes this is a rescue keep coming god bless you this is not all of them this night there are so many outside win that war tonight God is opening you up to a world of opportunity. Please, if you are coming, keep coming. Keep coming. The overflow outside, you can follow the main door. Quickly, keep coming. God bless you. What a night. Koinone, are you celebrating them? Your sacrifice of praise to God. Your sacrifice of praise. Don't sit back. The fact that you are uneasy is a sign God is saying, come out. 
don't let your friends stop you don't let anyone stop you don't say they are watching me everyone is is walking his own salvation with fear and trembling but apostle you don't know what I've done can I still come join them quickly join them I don't care what you have done join them quickly man of God will he still receive me I insulted church I insulted men of God join them he still loves you and he's giving you a new beginning he's giving you a new beginning hallelujah I salute your courage to come out here and stand before the Lord some of you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time some of you are rededicating your life genuinely you are tired of not being serious with God it doesn't matter what category you are most welcome I want you to lift your right hand and say this passionately you are not reciting a poem say this sincerely if you are still coming rush and come and catch up with them if you are still coming rush and come and catch up with them say after me Jesus is in this place say Jesus I know you are crying but try to say it say Jesus I love you with all my heart this night I have heard your word and I declare that I need you in my life I'm tired of rebellion I'm tired of mismanaging my life I hand it over to you now I receive Jesus now into my heart to be my Lord and personal Savior from tonight till forever I declare that you are my Lord eternal life is mine right now I receive the grace to move forward and to live for Jesus keep your hands lifted and I pray for you father look at the ones you died for they lift their hands to you in total surrender Lord I ask that these decisions will be genuine I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin hell and the flesh is broken over your life from today you receive a fresh grace and a fresh fire to live for Jesus all the days of your life I declare forward ever backward never in the name of the Lord Jesus whoever holds your destiny must let it go right now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now look at me it is important not just for you to give your heart to Jesus but to find yourself within the company of believers keeping a kingdom community is the key to sustaining kingdom values you can't do it alone you need to be part of a family of believers that can help you we're here every Fridays make sure that you join us there's someone waving his or her hands um, there's someone waving his hands on behalf of the ushers they are going to welcome you all I want you to do is to just take this way just follow them and please give your correct details we're going to get in touch with you and we'll follow up help that lady under the anointing we will follow up with you and in the name of Jesus Christ your life will never be the same God bless you just follow the gentleman God bless you Koinonia appreciate them appreciate them dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus I'll see you again bye